We are the Oliver Springs High School cheerleaders hanging out at Oak Ridge Utility District getting ready for the big game. Kick off the football season by purchasing your natural gas appliances from Oak Ridge Utility District. ORUD carries a full line of washers and dryers, ranges, cooktops, logs, grills, and much more in a variety of brands and styles. So be the champion of your team and score a touchdown with Oak Ridge Utility District and natural gas. A winning combination. So now the only question is, what time is it? It's high school football time in Tennessee. It's time for live high school football action on BBB Communications Cable Channel 12. Enjoy exciting Tri-County High School football on BBB Communications all season long. It's the Rome Medals Group Game of the Week. The Rome Medals Group Game of the Week is brought to you by Rome Medals Group, Oak Ridge Utility District, Eddie's Body Shop, Harriman Utility Board, Leader Drug Store, Live and Let Live Drug Store, Chase Drugs, and Kendra Drugs. Tennessee Eye Care, Sexton Autos of Oak Ridge, Evans Mortuary, Jerry Duncan Ford, Fox and Farley, SL Bowman and Son, Hammers Department Store, and now here's Ron Berry and David Queener for the Rome Medals Group Game of the Week. Welcome to Oliver Springs High School, where tonight the Oliver Springs <coughs> Bobcats will be taking on the Yellow Jackets from Williamsburg High School in Williamsburg, Kentucky. A little change in plans for the final BBB Channel 12 game of the week, but uh, certainly excited to be here tonight because David Queener, a lot riding on this ball game for the Bobcats. <clears throat> Ron, you're right. I mean, it's big for Oliver Springs tonight. It's win or stack them up, and it's, it's a big game. Uh, Williamsburg comes in with a pretty good record, 8-1, uh, and one, and uh, much improved football team from over last year, I believe. And, you know, it's a big game for our Springs, a team that's probably improved a lot with a lot of young kids. I was talking to the coaches before the game, a lot of sophomores playing. So what's that tell me and you? future looks good here at Oliver Springs. Yeah, it was about this time four years ago when we came, and there were a lot of freshmen. Those freshmen graduated last year. And it seems like the cycle has started over again. The only exception is the, the the bucket isn't near as empty this time around as it was when Coach Brackett first arrived. You're correct. And on the screen here, you'll see this is what Oliver Springs needs to happen. Now, they need to win. They need Rockwood or Jackson County to lose. It's not a guarantee, even if that happens. But it'd be it'll be pretty close. I would be willing to bet. I. I I put my money on my guys that this is pretty close right here. Does close get you in? Does close get you in? No, I mean, I put my money on my guys. No, close will not get you in. I put my guys' money on my guys that were close to what we're saying right here because Brad and You're Marty. saying research. Research. Buddy. Our research team. <laughs> Our research team. I agree. Team. You with me? I and agree. You, you know, Ron, we've crisscrossed for the last 11 weeks between Anderson and Roan and Morgan Counties. and Man got some great sponsors and I, it's really hard to believe I mean just be honest that it's over with I mean it's been a long 11 weeks but man we've had a good time doing it and I, I I've enjoyed all of it and you know David as you as you as you stop back and think about week one week one in Anderson County against CAK and we saw we saw a full season of football in one, in night. That one night we saw we saw kickoff returns we saw punt returns we saw passing that was unbelievable we saw runs that were unbelievable uh and, and we decided how can it get any better well it gets better because every time you tee it up in high school football you never know what's what's fixing to happen but one of the things that that has always amazes me as we as we do this is how you look at these young men the first week of the season and you look at them after the midway, the seven, eight, nine, ten weeks, it's unbelievable how far they can come. Well, I think what we'll see tonight with Oliver Springs is a team that's probably improved since we were here, what, a couple of weeks ago with Oneida. I think we'll see a much improved football team, and they've been playing that way. So, uh, 
you know, we just hang on. And you're right, Ron. It's uh, it's something we get to see these kids as it comes along as freshmen, some of them, and sophomores. And then it doesn't seem like it's very long that me and you're sitting here talking about, man, he's a senior and they're graduating 15 or 20. And, you know, it's just uh, we've had a good ride this year and all the sponsors and everybody that makes all this possible. And, you know, I, I just enjoy it. I'm just glad I'm along for the ride. That's all I can say. I don't bring much to it, but I'm glad I'm along for the ride. Well, you, you're – bring a lot to it we're, we're thankful to have you and we're thankful to have as you mentioned all the fine folks uh, our camera guys uh man how how lot, much have they oh, improved since week one? Oh man a bunch and not they, that they were bad week one but i mean you know we just we can we can we can pretty confidently say now let's look at the replay and see where we yeah. are well you know people look people think this is a big operation it's really not a big operation but we make it look like a big operation well tell brad it's not a big it, well, operation when he's over here trying <laughs> well, to he's, a one, he's a one man show he'd probably <laughs> like to have somebody else sitting over here helping him but anyway i mean just what i'm saying we uh it's just really and i hate to say this because when i said your your head will get so big it won't be fun you've taught me a lot about high school football and these some of these smaller areas and I really, you know, just go to show on all the carrying on we doing. It's all in good fun when we're doing it. Just the people when I come in tonight bragging me about you not buying me a hot dog or hamburger. And the guy sitting in front of us right here, off your your right hand side right here, he buys me a hamburger and that brings it to me. So, I mean, just which, those which things. tells you folks are watching, watching. You know, David, one of the things you talk about Oliver Springs, and you look at, and and you see the number of of young men who are not dressed out here tonight. And what would this season be different, how, how differently it would be for Oliver Springs? Number 44, Seth Morgan, an all-state player for a couple of years. He leads them on, you know, on offense. He leads them on defense. And just the fact that you look out there and you see you have him, if you're an Oliver Springs Bobcat, makes you feel just a little bit better. The young man uh, goes down in the Sweetwater game. They lose him for the season. And, and when, you're, when you're really looking at the start of the season, and, and you really are, are, are trying to decide, you know, who's who's going to be the man for us. This was the man for you this year. Yeah, he was. And, and, and when loss. he goes down, it's not it's not about how many yards he gains and how many how many tackles he made all necessarily. It's it's that leadership that that you get. And and how many times have we talked about senior leadership? And you lose a kid like this, uh, it's it's huge at a program like this. And and uh, this young man is quality. I mean, he's quality through and through. And he is, Ron, and he's probably, you know, you could probably look somewhere on this schedule and find a game that he might make. You know, he, he probably makes the difference in that game and probably gets him another win, you know, or helps him get another win. Maybe it's not as uh, there's a game on or maybe not that's not as lopsided. You know, they felt like the Sweetwater game from me talking to the coaches now that if they have him in the second half, he gets hurt in the first half. They they have him in the second half. They don't feel like that scores what it is up on the screen. So and then and then the next week you have to you have to learn how to how to play without him. Play without him. And and that's you know and and we saw that game, David. We did that game, and that was a physical physical football game. And if you have him in there, you know you your 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 young football team may gain a little bit. <laughs> that's not to say that they would have beaten Cofield, but but it's just. There's just a, a an air about football teams that that you that you learn to that you learn to depend and and who's got my back? Seth Morgan has my back. Yeah, you know, and he's sort of like the, he was sort of like the quarterback on defense, and it's like last week being in Clinton. You know, Clinton's quarterbacks out and they have to bring a new kid in, and you know, uh, it's it's tough, but hey, that's high school football, Ron, and it's it's more than anything. It's more on the small school level than it is anything. So you know, people like Oak Ridge and Anderson County, Clinton, and maybe even I'll throw Kingston in there. They can stand a loss or two. But you take people like Oliver Springs and, and, and Harriman, and let's throw Rockwood in there too. And they can't, uh, Cofield, they can't stand a loss of a, of a good athlete like that. And it, it's, it's crippling. Well, it's senior night here tonight in uh, Oliver Springs. They what? They've got a lot of seniors here coming out with the football team, the cheerleaders, the band members, and all this. Uh, all the other uh, activities that Senior Night is here. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk to you about some uh, some games around the area tonight and and uh, talk about this game uh, as we as we continue.
and check out a new tradition at Clinton Drugstore, Polka Dot Gift Boutique. You will find the most unique collection of gifts while browsing through the store. A mix of brands like Turvis Tumblr, Yankee Candle, Glory House, Flip Bird, UT Merchandise, and so much more. The diverse selection is something that you have to see for yourself. We have monogramming available and an always friendly staff to help you find the perfect gift. So come by Polka Dot Gifts today, located in Clinton Drugstore. This 1970 newspaper ad shows why East Tennesseans have been shopping at Hammers for over 60 years. Six out of seven items are under $5. Today's ads for Hammers have similar savings. What's Hammers' big secret? It's simple. They sell famous brands for the lowest price possible every day. New fall fashion shoes and rugs are arriving daily. Shop Hammers today and save. I'm Senator Ken Yeager and I want to join the rest of the community to wish all of our athletic teams the best of success this year. Athletic sports is a good way to build esteem and physical fitness. And thanks too to the others who help, the students, the parents, the bands and the cheerleaders and all of the folks who make football time in Tennessee a, a great Tennessee tradition. Thank you for all that you do and thank you for letting me be your Senator. David, some uh, games around the area tonight. Austin East is at Gibbs. Bradley Central has McMinn County. Big ball game there. That's That has playoff. It does. Big ball game. Catholic is at Beard, and Catholic fighting for their life. Not happening, though, tonight. Beard and gets him. It's at Beard. Clinton is at Anderson County. Yeah. Cofield is at Oakdale. <coughs> Fulton is at uh, Union County. Grace is at South Pittsburgh. Boy, what a ball game that'll be. I guarantee you in South Pitt tonight bringing, bringing Grace in because I think Grace was probably the number one team in the state last year when they came up here. Uh, that'll be, a, that'll be a, a, a full house. Yeah, it'll probably be a perfect crowd down there. South Pitt big tonight. Halls at Central. Hardin Valley at Carnes. Harriman at Greenback. Jefferson County at South Dole, Jellico at Oneida, Lenore City at Maryville. A lot of people thinking that that could be an upset. But no, uh, not probably happen. not. Loudon at Kingston, a big ball game for Kingston as they uh, they try to maintain their current seed and finish the season at uh, seven and three. Might be an upset there tonight, Ron. Never Oak Ridge know. is at Campbell County. Rockwood is at Midway, and Rockwood uh, in a must win at Midway tonight. Stone Memorial at Scott County. It's Wartburg at Sunbright. And in our game here tonight, Williamsburg of Kentucky here at Oliver Springs. And David, as you look at the District 4A uh, pairings there, Oliver Springs comes into District 4 and 2, 4 and 5 overall. And, and you know, when you get to that 5 and 5 mark, things start getting a little bit iffy. Know, typically five and five probably gets you in, but but in in one A and two A, you only have 24 teams instead of the 32 teams that that the other uh, classifications have. So correct. Five and five, uh, you, 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 then you have to start looking, you know, possibly for help. Uh, not a, not a really solid situation to be in. No, it's not. You you know that's why I say all wins are important. And folks, this one counts tonight, big time. And you can see the quad, quad there: Greenback, Cofield, Copper Basin, Cloudland, Lookout Valley, Midway. And you know, uh, Cofield could slide down to a uh, four seed there, possibly, depends on what happens tonight. And and we're not going to know some of this. We might not know some of it till in the morning. But I got a feeling we're going to know most of it tonight before 12 o'clock on our end up well, there's, way. There's one thing: Cloudland for sure could upset Hampton because Cloudland has been a force in that in that uh, area uh, for a long, long time and typically comes down between Cloudland and Hampton. Right. And so that's, that's a possibility. <coughs> that's a possibility. Now, I don't uh, believe Copper Basin upsetting <laughs> Boyd Buchanan is a very possible thing to happen. No, probably not. <coughs> so here's uh, here's Class 2A Quad 1, and and that's, uh, you know, a lot. And Boyd, do you think that Grace is – is thinking about their schedule of South Pitt this year? Yes. <laughs> uh, they're probably thinking, why did we schedule them? 
Who uh, scheduled that? Whose bright idea was that? It's probably what they're thinking. You know, if, if Grace loses the South Pit and and, the, and Oliver Springs gets in, then uh, Boyd Buchanan would probably go to the Chattanooga quad and Oneida would be the number one seed. Um, and, and the problem, and a lot of folks are saying, well, how does – how to, what happened to Oliver Springs, and what happens to Oliver Springs is, you know, is you have a you have a team out of the top 24 that's that's won their district and probably will be four and six when they finish tonight, but that team gets an automatic bid. So that's what happens again when you're that five and five team and you're sitting on the bubble and, and the sixth seed is the bubble because that's all you have. Uh, you know, you 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 gotta take care of your business and hope some folks help you out. And, you, yeah, you're exactly right. And, you know, like <clears throat> showing Rockwood there tonight, Rockwood's got to go to Midway and play a much improved Midway team tonight. And, you know, uh, that, that's a game they got to win. Anytime you're going to play on somebody's home field and being a little rivalry game, you never know. Uh, you hope Rockwood's got the the strength to do it. But, man, you know, that, that ball bounce is funny. Well, it does. And, and here's here's one that, uh, you know, a big win last night by Alcoa. Yeah, well, and, who picked that right? And oh, I don't know. I did. Oh, did you? Yeah. Wait. No. We may not. Well, did. I, I didn't. I wasn't. Not? Well, I, I wasn't. I wasn't for sure. I, I, oh yeah. They've but, revenged but, every loss from last well, year. Well, but but boy, last night, how big were extra points last night? Well, our good friend Coach Tap, what's he say? You start chasing them. And they, well, you, I mean, you know, you know Oka, oh, Alcor came right off the bat, you're going for two. But but think about the fumble snap on one when they were going for two, and they were able to get it in. And then you think about. The one CAK got that was no good that the, that they gave them. That's what I'm saying. And then the two point conversions that they tried were no good. You reverse those things around, and and you know now let me ask you this: We talked about this Wednesday night, and we talked about a, a, a rematch with with CAK and Alcor. And one of the things that that I asked you then was, is it is it harder to regroup and take care of stopping the run, or is it harder to regroup? And try to figure out how to stop the passing of CAK. Well, <laughs> apparently Alcoa solved the passing stuff because they cut it down in the second half. It was really cut. He got cut in the second half. Well, and Smith was in and out. <clears throat> some, Smith was in and out. I'm telling you, and I say this, and I'm still more impressed with the How kid and Ann the Smith. Kid. Well, the How kid's awfully he's he's awfully <clears throat> tough. There's no question, that, and probably will set the national record. I think Brad said he's 15. Yeah shy now so uh, you know he's going to have a couple games to to do that and 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 might in in the next game but but i think the rematch of that one you know is really of course cak's got to win you know to get to alcoa but uh, that's going to be interesting i don't believe they'll be in the rematch it'll be same scenario again i believe it's alcoa alcoa just showed me too much last night i don't CAK's not deep enough and we we knew that going in anyway. they missed a lot of tackles they early did. in that ball game mercy. And it was, and then, like you said, Smith, uh, he had his problems during the game, and that hurts a little bit too. So, uh, you know something else? Alcoa was pretty smart last night. And then, or CAK didn't have him back on kickoffs. He was back on punts, and they really didn't. He, he fair caught everything. And that and that takes a part of CAK's game away. the special team part. You know, what Anderson County, well, he, returned a touch, he returned one for a touchdown up there. I mean, he did have the long pass reception, right. but still yet, he got took out of some big – he got took out of his game last night. My hat's off to Alcoa, and that sophomore running back from Alcoa, that Tyson kid, Lord have mercy, he's going to be a handful, and he's a senior. Who would have ever thought that in Class 6A that you would have had five district champions in in the same quad? Nobody. I mean that that's really that's really uh, uh, something that that may not ever happen again. No, it's been a really good year in 6A football. I think, you know, Upper East Tennessee has surprised us a little bit, if you want to say it's a surprise. We've had some really good football. Usually it's not as good up in Upper East Tennessee. When I say Upper, I mean Kingsport, Science Hill, and all those guys. They've had some pretty good football this year. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens and plays out in that tonight, Ron. Oak Ridge could get to host a game. or How, how would you like to know you're 9-1 and, and on the road? 9-1 and, and on the road. I, I mean, just – Come on, nine and one and on the road. But it's really not Oak Ridge's fault. They took care of their been Unfortunately for them, everybody else has really had a really good year this year. Right. Let's uh, let's take a break. We'll come back and talk more about uh, games around the area here tonight. Junk car 
Chrome Metals is located just off of Highway 27 between Harriman and Rockwood. Come check out a new tradition at Clinton Drugstore, Polka Dot Gift Boutique. You will find the most unique collection of gifts while browsing through the store. A mix of brands like Turbis Tumbler, Yankee Candle, Glory House, Flip Bird, UT Merchandise, and so much more. The diverse selection is something that you have to see for yourself. We have monogramming available and an always friendly staff to help you find the perfect gift. So come by Polka Dot Gifts today, located in Clinton Drugstore. This 1970 newspaper ad shows why East Tennesseans have been shopping at Hammers for over 60 years. Six out of seven items are under $5. Today's ads for Hammers have similar savings. What's Hammers' big secret? It's simple. They sell famous brands for the lowest price possible every day. New fall fashion shoes and rugs are arriving daily. Shop Hammers today and save. I'm Senator Ken Yeager, and I want to join the rest of the community to wish all of our athletic teams the best of success this year. Athletic sports is a good way to build esteem and physical fitness. And thanks, too, to the others who help, the students, the parents, the bands, and the cheerleaders, and all of the folks who make football time in Tennessee a, a great Tennessee tradition. Thank you for all that you do, and thank you for letting me be your senator. David, we, uh, we're, we're here at Oliver Springs tonight in a, in a big football game. And, and, you know, you schedule these things for two years. How quickly a team can turn around because, you know, had, had this been last year, you would have felt pretty good about, you know, about playing this game for, a, for an opportunity to, you know, to advance to the playoffs. But this, uh, this football team obviously has, uh, has gotten things turned around and, uh, you know this this uh, football team comes in eight and one, and uh, they're going to throw the ball probably 75 percent of the time tonight. Have a left-handed quarterback that obviously has a uh, you know some, some some good skills and and uh, uh, you know you see a you see him right here. He's he's a pass for 2,251 yards, 29 touchdowns, uh, and and he also rushes the ball uh, extremely well. So. Uh, you know, this is a this is a team that's that's going to be tough uh, uh, for for Coach Brackett. You know, what you have is is you have uh, uh, you know you have a a young man in the, in the wide receiver here that's that's had a had a pretty good career uh, in one season, both offensively and defensively. But he's suspended tonight, um, and so that's a plus for Oliver Springs. Well, you know, wonder. Don't know what he's suspended for, but but uh, you know, don't you reckon Coach Brackett had something to do with that? I don't know whether he did or not. Uh, <clears throat> I can tell you this much: Williamsburg, this game for Williamsburg tonight means absolutely nothing other than making them nine and one. Win or lose in Kentucky, they'll play the same team. So maybe he's suspended for not. They don't want him to get him hurt. I don't know. I mean, that's just something to think about. All we know is he's suspended. All we know so he's suspended. Right. We don't know. Uh, maybe they don't want to get him hurt down here. So I don't know. So. But it's uh, you know, this is uh, this is Oliver Springs. If you if you look, black uniform. So Halloween, the the black and uh, the black and gold here tonight for for Oliver Springs. So Coach Brackett, uh, as you see. As you see a youngster in their traditional white and purple uniform, looks a little different, doesn't it? Doesn't look like the same team. No, it doesn't. I think they've got purple pants on, though. Or they got black pants on. I can't really tell you. Purple. But I got my purple on. Where's yours? But uh, you know, the other thing that uh, the other thing to, that that you that you have to, to, to do tonight is is uh, you know you got a lot of incentive for this football team because they know that you lose. And, and you know you start basketball practice. Uh, you know you win, and, and then you just sort of sit by the TV tonight and, and watch the Friday night school board show, and perhaps uh, you know perhaps you, you get to continue to play. Correct. And all you got to do tonight is tune in. And like you said a while ago, I got some of the best research guys. They make me look good, but they make me look really good. Marty and Brad. Man, Ooh. has to have them. Got to have them, man. And they're. Marty's calling me today and just told me some things. He's been working on it all day, and he's going to have to rack his brain. But we're, we're going to have it tonight. Uh, 
But if you want to hear it for real tomorrow, tune in at 11 o'clock on the TWSWA network, which will be fed through channel 12, and you can watch it and see from 6A down to 1A who's in, and even in the private, and catch it all tomorrow. So, uh, Well, that's one thing that uh, – We do it. But listen, we do it all, but That's one thing <laughs> that uh, that we pride ourselves on at, at channel 12 is is most of, uh, you know, the – a large portion of our budget is in research, yeah. and and we well, provide it, we provide a lot of uh, a yeah. lot of extensive research all across the country. Well, I mean, we've got we've got guys on our staff <laughs> all across the country bringing us information that we can uh, that we can dispense to our fans. And speaking of research, I'd be amiss if I didn't mention my guys that's called in. I know you've got some that you know about. Uh, my brother Steve, uh, Archie Brummett, my son Josh, uh, Bill Riggs, and those guys. They've called me all year long and give me scores and uh, helped us out here on Friday night games we needed to know about. So without those people helping us, uh, you know, we couldn't do it neither. But if like the I say, a large part of research, our research. Yeah, well, their budget's probably like mine, zero. <laughs> well, now, I don't know. I don't know why you always have to. I got to you know, go You always there. have to go to the negative, you know. Well, the negative is huh? the best place to go with you, and even the fans know it down here. Well, now, you know, like <clears> I say, you always want to go to the negative. I don't understand well, you know it's going to. You know, Ron, this has been a. It's been a. It's been a really a, a a weird season for us. Really, just the way. You know, when we sat down and talked about it the other night, just the way some of the teams turned out. Some of them have turned out right on par, but uh, it's been it's been a strange year, sort of. Well, it has. Man, have we not seen some good football games though? We even I mean even though some of them have been a little one sided, but we've seen some good football games this year. Well, we have, and, and uh, you know they've been they've been. Uh, uh, awfully good, and and certainly uh, uh, we've got to we've got to find out something right off the bat here. Though we've got somebody wearing Seth Morgan's jersey there, and, uh, Michael Nelson. Michael Nelson. Okay, so uh, Michael Nelson will be 44, and I'm sure that's a, a tribute. Probably to, is. Uh, to Seth Morgan. Yeah. Um, so that's a. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, so we're just uh, moments away here from the uh, from the coin toss, and uh, we will. Uh, we've got. Uh, I believe it's going to be a good football game, Ron. I really do. Oliver Springs is well coached, as you know. I believe they've got them ready tonight, and I believe they'll. But it's going to be a good football game. Well, I, it has the makings of one. You know, and I, I, if we look at everybody, there's a couple coaches this year, Ron, that really stick out to me. I don't really know the Kingston coach that well. He's done a fairly good job this year down there uh, with his team, with his football team. Uh, you know, Coach Brackett has done a really good job here considering what he lost last year. Uh, he's done a really good job here this year. And, you know, Coach Tapp's not had what he wanted to in Harriman, but with the young kids he's got and all the injuries he's had, he's done a really good job, too, this year. He has. And I'm not going to leave Coach Webb and them out and Coach Henry down there and Coach Blake. I'm not leaving them out. Coach Kerr, Coach Gill, they've all had good years, but we sort of expected those guys to have good years. But I'm just looking at some of these guys that really had some, you know, 22 seniors here last year, I believe, 23. That's a lot to replace, Ron. It is. And when and considering you had your running back, your quarterback, and receiver, right. and some linemen, I mean, they replaced some quality kids. I guarantee Coach Brack, he would take them back right tonight for this game. He'd love to have them for one game. Oh, just absolutely. <coughs> absolutely. The uh, the captains for Oliver Springs tonight will be uh, number one, John Sims. Number 44 will be Michael Nelson, who's usually 32, but – uh, he'll be wearing Seth Morgan's number tonight. Uh, Bradford Jordan will be 42. Jordan Bafford. And it'll be uh, Stephen Westfall will be number 50. Uh, Ian Smith will be 63. And Kyle McGee, number 70. So we're going to go down <laughs> and, and uh, we'll have a moment of silent prayer. And then the uh, Oliver, Springs, uh, Oliver Springs marching band will play our national anthem.
Officials now are gathering the captains. Uh, the pregame festivities have concluded, and we're just a little, uh, a, a little bit here. We're going to be taking off for the Tennessee I Care kickoff, the Hammers first downs, and folks, we're uh, we're just about there. And uh, Morgan wearing uh, Seth Morgan wearing Nelson's jersey, and uh, Nelson wearing Morgan's jersey. So for the Logan Hamlin will be a captain. Jeffers. Uh, Loy. And Michael Hamlin. So that'll be the captains for Williamsburg. Oliver Springs has won the toss. So Oliver Springs wins the toss. So David Queener, we're just moments away, and we're ready to go. And David, I tell you what, this this quarterback for for the uh, Yellow Jackets is a big, big kid. He's a big young man. <laughs> he is. You're right. I mean, he looks like a tight end. Threw for 2,200 yards, run, 29 TD passes, seven interceptions, 65 rushing attempts for 385. He's pretty all around. He's pretty well rounded. And David, uh, quite a few students from Williamsburg made the jump down here tonight. So. Not not a bad crowd. So the Yellow Jackets now waiting to make their entrance onto the field as the cheerleaders await their arrival. And certainly a lot on the line here tonight in Oliver Springs. We thank them for allowing us to be here tonight with our high school football game of the week. We thank our fine sponsors for being with us again this year. And we thank you for tuning in each and every Friday night for this high school game of the week. We hope that you've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed bringing them to you and certainly look forward to this game here tonight. So the band will leave the field. The cheerleaders will take their positions along the sidelines. And ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for high school football here on Channel 12. And once again, anytime that you're playing Oliver Springs, Coach Brackett wants to run about six or seven minutes off the clock and hope for some points at the end. You're exactly right. And that's why he wants the football right here. No need waiting for the second half. He wants to set the tone early, and he's going to try to do that right here. So Nelson and Keith Roberts will be deep for Oliver Springs. And kicking off for Williamsburg will be Brentley Patrick. 
like that boy's shoes, Ron. <laughs> Kicking shoes, huh? I guess, but they're bright. I can say that. So this is the Tennessee Eye Care kickoff. 882-7470, Tennessee Eye Care. They'll take care of all your eye care needs. Nelson at about the 17-yard line. Nelson trying to find some running room, and it looked like he had a little space. Oh, but no, he fumbled? I thought I heard a whistle. Yes, I thought I heard a whistle. So it'll be a hammer's first down for the Bobcats. The ball will be placed at the Bobcat 37-yard line. 33-yard line, I'm sorry. And so a hammer's first down. And again, if you're looking at uniforms, it almost looks like Oneida on the field. Yes, it does. It <laughs> Just a little bit deeper orange. So, Roberts will take it across the 45. So, Buck the quarterback for the Bobcats. And this young man, a freshman, David, and we, we have seen him develop a lot this year. Yeah. So coming on for the Bobcats up the middle and Stevenson. Just about picked the first down up front. He's gonna be probably just a little bit short, third down and less than one probably for the Bobcats. So, so Stevenson. as the Bobcats look for the play. And they're gonna to give to Nelson and Nelson will power his way to the 45 yard line and that'll be a hammer's first down for the Bobcats. And right now, David, the offensive line of Oliver Springs getting a little push. Getting a little push, Ron. Running games look really, really good for Oliver Springs right now. So a good Gets block it. on the outside and he turns it in and it's the hammer's first down for the Bobcats. So the Bobcats now stay in the shotgun formation. And again, this time on the second man Big through, cross 50 down to the 48 yard line goes Stevenson. And again, the Bobcats just pushing ahead right now and and are controlling the line of scrimmage. You know, Ron, anytime you put on a first down, you pick up about seven yards there, make second down, third down a whole lot easier for you. Second down and about four. Take a little chance right here if you want to. Which I don't think our Springs is going to, but you can. And again, you see Buck in the backfield there looking at his wristband for the play. And this time again, off the of right side, and this time, the Yellow Jackets are there for the stop. Might have lost a yard. And the big kid is Dakota Loy on the stop. And this time he gets hit as Loy actually comes down the line of scrimmage. That's pretty good speed for the big man. So third down and let's say five for Oliver Springs. So big play here in this drive. And they're going to give it again, and he's going to get to the outside. And he's got the first down and into the secondary. And a nice play that time by Oliver Springs. Sean Childress that time gets to the, gets to the, he gets outside and gets it down. So another big first down there, David. Yeah, another it's, big run. And it's another Hammers first down. Yeah, you might want to go to Hammer tomorrow, Ron. Big sale? I don't know about the big sale, but they're going to have some coats. You're going to need one because it's going to get cold. Boy, it is. It's supposed to get cold. Well, the Carhartt boys will be in town. They're buying all them Carhartt stuff, and it's going to be a penalty against Oliver Springs yeah. this time for illegal motion. So that one will come back. Loy again on the stop, the big 
nose guard, but this one's coming back. It'll be first and 15. Had a man going forward that time. Yeah, he got a little bit ahead of himself. Well, they make it, they make they may decline this. Now you wouldn't want to decline it, would you? So it'll be first and fifteen. So the first time now on first down that the Bobcats uh, don't have a, a pretty good command of the down and distance. True, but the way they've been running the ball, Ron, I, you know, it's still manageable, but you'd like to be able to throw the ball just a little bit. See, they're, uh, they're sort of keeping uh, Williamsburg off balance right now. And this time he ha doesn't have oh, anything inside. Brunch is outside. One oh, there's a flag. Blocked in the back right there, so this will come back a little bit. And, David, that's a case right there. If you really don't have to do anything, he had the sideline already made. Correct. And that's going to back it up even further. But there you see him go inside, good kick outside, and you'll see the back block back right there. Right there. But a good run that time by Nelson. So it's going to come back, and again, now on the first down play. Man, this is going to buy. This is going to make it what first and about. Uh, well, they they had gained about seven yards. Yeah, but still, yet it's going to put it. So it's on going to be from the it's going to be from the spot of the foul. Uh, so they lost about, a, about yard. a yard. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was going to be on back just a little bit further. It's going to be way back there. It's going to really hurt. Me. So first and about seventeen now. Nice run that time though, as Nelson didn't have anything up the middle, so he bounced it outside. Had good speed to get outside. So another Hammers first down try for the Bobcats. So Buck now again looking at his wristband has the play. Back to throw, looking, looking, being pursued. And he had a man out there. He just had two, two yellow jackets swarming all over him. But he had Nelson out in the flat. And if he hits Nelson because they were coming, they had the blitz on. If he hits Nelson right there, got two shirts out in front of him, a lot of running room. Yeah, they get the first down, that's true, because he had a lot of it. Big play right there. We'll come back to that one, I'm sure, before the night's over. And, if, and again, that's a freshman, but if he just looks a little sooner, about two counts sooner, and gets rid of that ball, that's a big play. Second down now in 17. And the, and the Yellow Jackets oh, are coming. The, the ball's on the ground, and this time Buck's going to get – hit behind the line for about a three yard loss. And Lamori is on the stop that time, third down now, and the Jackets coming after the Bobcats right now. The Bobcats need a big play. You punch the ball here, Ron? No, it's just third down. And no, I thought just third four. down. And, I thought it was four. And Williamsburg now, getting back in like a little nickel defense here. Now only three down linemen. So they're looking for the pass here. And here they go, and a big, big lineman again. Loy, that's about third tackle for Loy. And now they'll have to punt it away and the drive stalls as the penalties catch the Bobcats on that series. You just can't have those penalties, Ron. They no, just they're they're just drive they're drive killers, aren't they? And the big the big uh, tackle there, Loy, really uh, really came alive. Sims kick, oh a nice high Love booming kick. Punt. Can Oliver Springs get down and catch? No, it goes yep. into the end zone. So a big booming kick by Sims. So just like that. The Yellow Jackets will have it first and 10 on a Hammers first well, down. Well, man, we got a flag. They're in their own 20 and a flag is down. Back up here on about the 49. See it land on a 50, on a zero part, across the field. Across the field. Looks like they're gonna go talk to Williamsburg though. So another penalty. Williamsburg probably wants the ball. 
I'll start. Decline. So Williamsburg will have it first and 10 on the Hammers first down at their own 20 yard line. Whoa, what a booming kick. That thing, that thing left his foot and looked like a cannon was shot. Good punt. Would have been nice if they could have pinned them down there, Ron, and really made them give them a long field drive. But, you know, 80 yards. A little yards, backspin, didn't you? You need a little bit. Here we go as Williamsburg now comes to the line of scrimmage. In the shotgun, spreads you out all over the field. Looks, throws it out, and a man wide open, and he'll try to get some after the yard, after the catch yards, and he'll get it out to the 35-yard line. It'll be another first down. So Morgan on the stop for the Bobcats, but not until they get it out to the 35-yard line, gain of 15. And you know, this young man looks a whole lot like High of C-A-K. Ooh, we won't go that far. Throws the ball well. Nice, tight sparrow. I don't know if he has the same kind of receivers or not. This time he just pulls it in on a quarterback draw, and he'll pick up another first down. He'll have it out to the 47-yard line. So Tinker on the stop, but it's not until Williamsburg gets another first down. Fulfills up seven to nothing, Ron. And Ron, you know, it's hard as a defensive coordinator to, you know, to scheme against this guy. He does both pretty good, so it's it's hard. It's hard. Guess we got a penalty against him. Yes. Holding that at about the 37-yard uh, line, so that one will come back. Mark it down at the 27-yard line. Well, both teams playing a little sloppy right now. On the penalty side of the ball, anyway. And David, you've got a young, a big young man at, at quarterback. You also have a big young man out in the slot that normally, I guess, would you'd have to consider him a tight end. And somewhere during this game, I'm sure he's going to be a big factor. He's a big kid. He is. He's a big old boy. Back to throw, and we'll they're going to come time. deep down in the – and – he was looking inside, turned outside, and still had a chance to catch the football. Just goes through his hands. Great Ron. pass, and look right here, he turns. It's just through his arms. Just through his arms. Great throw, though. That just shows you the accuracy that the young man has, and, and the Bobcats breathe a well, sigh of relief. You might have said that the guy looked like the CAK quarterback, but not the receivers because something I watched last night, you know CAK, they caught it with their hands, with not their hands. with their arms. So they go get the ball. Second down now in about 20. Size more again. This time he'll do the quarterback draw again. Has a lot of running room. Has uh -oh. a blocker out front. And Sizemore gets it to midfield. And it'll be a first and 10 on the Hammers first down. Sizemore slow to get up. But he doesn't hesitate. He had uh, he had the quarterback draw all the way, and a good sized kid. You can see see how big he is. Well, he's a big kid. So it's another hammers first down at midfield. And Ron looks like he's got some wheels too. So the Yellow Jackets overcome the penalty, and Sizemore yet to have anyone else touch the ball other than the receivers. And himself, the running back, just a figurehead. Back to throw again. Looking, there goes the other way. Inside. Intercept. And that time, Oliver Springs. They fumbled it. Oliver Springs got it back. Oliver Springs had great position that time. Fumbled the ball. And it looked like Childress out there. And that time, the ball was thrown on the wrong side. That time, Childress had the inside coverage. And a great, a great play. Childress was really the only one that could catch that ball, wasn't he? Yes. Right there, you see the good goes coverage up, goes it. up. Man, what a good camera work, guys. Fumbles it. Gets it back. So Oliver Springs now on the first turnover. And Oliver Springs offensively now will take off about the same, about the same place they started their last drive. So Oliver Springs now. And Buck 
This time, man, they're eating it up now. Ron. Gives it to uh, Childress, and they're going to have to do something to slow the rush down. Looks like a screen pass should be in order. Gets it out to the 30. So a loss of a uh, loss of about two. Well, but right now Williamsburg's just coming. They're well, just that's what I was going to say, Ron. Big number 15, the linebacker there. Man, he's just shooting the gap there. They're going to have to help him on this side, block him a little bit. Cause he's pretty good. He's pretty good sized kid too. Childress that time again will get back probably to about the original line of scrimmage. Be a third down and 10. Let's call it third and nine. So Oliver Springs again there will be back in Oh, got to throw the flag. There it comes. And it looks like Loy that time was trying to get a little anxious. Boy, and, a, and, a, and an offside penalty last night was huge, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So offsides against the you know, Yellow Jackets, and that'll give uh, Oliver Springs a much more manageable third down play. Still third and nine, third and four. It's a whole lot easier to get four than it is nine. So Oliver Springs again from the shotgun, looking to the play. So they'll get a number, then they'll look at their wristband for the play. There's the wristband look, here we go. How complicated has high school football gotten over the years? This time, over the left side, he's gonna come up short. But again, Stevenson that time finds a couple of yards on his own. Once again, the guy you're talking about coming up, David, he's coming up from his linebacker position. And Oliver Springs now with fourth and two. And the punting, punting team not in yet. Let's see, they're probably gonna try to draw them off sides. See yeah. if they can draw them off and then, uh, and then punt. Yeah, Ron, him a big number 78. 15 to 78 right now defensively, they're tearing it up. So the Yellow Jackets stay put. So now Coach Brackett will have his team around him and let's see what they decide to do. The ball's on the ball's on the 40 yard line. Well, I believe you gotta punt it. So Oliver Springs 40 yard line. So let's see what happens. Take a break. just off of Highway 27 between Herman and Rockwood. Left here in the first quarter of play, Oliver Springs spreads it out, Sims in punt formation. See if he boots good snap. Another and another wobbly kick, not quite as good as the first one, but good takes bounce. a big bounce and it won't be returned. Did it hit him? Wow. Oliver Springs should have jumped on it. I don't know whether it hit him or not, but I just sure jumped on it. So the ball will be placed at the 15 yard line of the Yellow Jackets. Boy, dangerous for the blocker to come Maybe. in there. And, and, <laughs> if we uh, got that on replay or not, let's see. Try to, uh, to get that close to the football. Drop looked like it was a little off that time on the punt. And there's the bounce. And here you come right there. And I don't guess it got close to him. No, number seven. I don't know what number seven's deal was. That's awfully dangerous to come running sure in there is. like that. So it'll be a Hammers first and 10 for Williamsburg on their own 15 yard line. Second possession, 
And again, Sizemore back to throw, looking across the middle. The man is there, and it's intercepted. And Sims will have it at about the 11-yard line, 12-yard line, and that time it looked like a catch in and out of his hands, and Sims picks it up on the tip drill, and Oliver Springs right back in great position. In his, Look at that. With his hands right through it, it's a good interception. Pretty good camera work, huh? Way to go, guys. That was good camera work right there. So now Oliver Springs. Oliver Springs needs to score right here, They Ron. need to put some on the board now. They've had a couple of opportunities. And That's there's a flag. That's an illegal participation. You cannot have that. I don't know how, how many penalty yards you think we've had in this court. We've had several. Still have 12, so one more will come off. So here we go. The pot's right. 158 left. Buck this time gives it. Off the right size, Stevenson will take it inside the 15. Ron, gonna have to just, gonna have to throw the ball just a little bit. Just, you know, David, just, right now, just a little bit. With the way the the way they're playing this thing, would a slant not be open right now? Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe a tight end, a little tight end pass, because that linebacker on this side, number 15. He's standing in the middle more. He's coming. He's, he's, he's coming. Com he's coming. Every time. He's coming. So you're right. A slant, just a little slant that way. He's gonna. He's gonna work. This time they get an extra blocker in. And Stevenson that time gets inside the 15, but uh, the linebacker again is up. So Jefferson Patrick comes again, but but they're they they actually had the formation that time to get. Um, to get additional blockers out front. Six to nothing up in uh, Anderson County. AC up six to nothing right over Clint. First quarter, but just a few seconds left too. <clears throat> so see, you're, getting, well, you you're got, getting all the blockers you can. You got 15 that's coming and you got three that's filling in his right. spot from the free safety. So watch them when they come up. So whistles blow and that may be some illegal procedure there, illegal formation. And I don't, you know, I've, I've not got to watch a film on any of Williamsburg and Ron, what I fix and say. But I believe if I'm, if I'm Oliver Springs, though, I don't throw the ball to the long side of the field. I throw it to the short side of the field. It would be a little easier for their quarterback. That's a long throw for that young man to make that he's got to make there. I'll throw over here on this side. Then you got, a friend, 17. Then you got a friend over here, Ron, out of bounds. Here we go. Big play. And we should have had motion, and we Another did have. Another penalty. Another pe and it's an interception. I don't know if the flag will know this or not. Ron, I think it might. It's correct. Well, it should have blew it dead before the play went off because there was a false start before the play went off, Ron. It's just, no, we didn't. So, I don't know where he was throwing it. First quarter, Rockwood is up 14 to nothing over Midway. Tigers taking care of business. So, the turnover, and it's a Hammers first down now for the Yellow Jackets of Williamsburg, Kentucky. That's big right there, Ron. That's real big. Sizemore now. Back at quarterback for the Yellow Jackets. They have it first and 10 at their own 18. Hammers first down. First time the running back has the football and he'll get to about the 21. So Patrick has it and that's the end of the first quarter of play, no score.
for 30 years. Jerry Duncan Ford and Harriman has maintained a reputation that stands on its own. They have thousands of satisfied customers from Tennessee and from all over the U.S. Shop with us online at jerryduncanford.com. At Duncan Automotive, nearly 85% of their customers are either repeat customers or referrals, which means that they're doing two things right. One, they're selling great cars, and two, they're treating customers like family. Shop online at duncanautoonline.net. Hi, sports fans. I'm Kent Calfey, the candidate for state representative of the 32nd District. I'd like to ask y'all to come out on Friday night and support the football teams, the bands, the dance corps, the flag corps, the cheerleaders, and everyone else involved in Friday night sports. These are our leaders of the future. And speaking of support, I'd like to ask for your vote on November the 6th. I'm Kent Calfey for State Representative, and I approve this message. So we start second quarter action. And we had the turnover that the Yellow Jackets are now trying to capitalize on. We got a barn burner going on. So second down and nine for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. Oliver Springs jumping in and out of the defensive alignment. They'll throw it up. Nice catch this time. Oh, good catch from the big man. And uh, Griffin that time comes down with the ball. And it'll be out to the 15-yard line. So third down and five. Sims made a nice stop, allowing him no more yards after the catch. So timeout, official timeout. What are they trying to do here? The umpire looking to maybe get a chin strap adjusted. So here come the Yellow Jackets. And again, this time Sizemore on the quarterback draw. And he'll be about a half a yard short of the first down. So let's see what happens here. They're going to have a measurement and he got a he, he got a little better spot than I than the official coming in off the side over there. So looks like he might have made it by about a, a half of a football. Nope, just like I thought, he was a little short. <laughs> Oh, he's got it by about an inch, he said. Barry, come well, on. Well, the official kept kept a different angle every time he'd come oh. in from the side over there. Don't blame so it on the fourth. So, big Christmas. fourth down play here. Uh, we'll find out what Williamsburg's uh, strategies are right off the bat. They're going to go fourth and inches from their own 29-yard line. So, let's see. They're going for it. They better hope they can make it. No hesitation, is there? None. Might be just trying to draw them off sides. That's your favorite call in this position. Well, the freeze is uh, yeah. is, is, is is working for a, a, at a lot of places for a lot of uh, at a lot of times. It'd be easy if you was a defense coordinator against you because you'd want those screen passes in the freeze play. So Sizemore just tries to get a push. So it looks like a first down and the big quarterback. Just pulls his way ahead. All he needed was forward penetration. And he spun there at the end and got some penetration. Big first down for the Yellow Jackets. So, Yellow Jackets on another Hammers first down. And a flag, it'll be a delay of game. Oh, that's, uh, we've had, there's been at least 10 penalties in the, <laughs> in the first quarter and a half. Both teams making it difficult on themselves. And, and, and it's not just one side, it's both sides doing it. 
So that'll take third. it back to the 15 yard line. Sizemore looks like a good looking kid though, David. Yeah, he does. So Sizemore looks over the defense, back to throw. Roaming now has a man open in the flat. It's complete, and he makes the first man miss, still on his Bump. feet. Oh, I thought he fumbled. And he's coming down the sideline, still on his feet, and gets it all the way down to about the 44-yard line. David, he picked up 20 yards <laughs> after the initial hit. And one, of the, and one of the smallest men on the field, too. They is bouncing off him like ragdoll. Look here. Watch this. Bang. Look there. Knocked him back two yards. Good block right there that comes in. He, he, that kid just pushed him forward. I mean, he was bouncing off like ragdoll. So now it's first and 10 at the Oliver Springs, let's call it the 46-yard line. You know, Ronnie's got 100, and, I mean, 804 yards received. He's not slouched. And again, the Oliver Springs Bobcats get him. But once again, he almost broke that one loose. He's back now to the Oliver Springs 48-yard line. They almost jarred it loose, Ron. They almost got it. Miller's right on the stop for Oliver Springs. Big play, second down <coughs> and about 16. 940 left here in this first half of play. Neither team able to take advantage of some turnovers. Penalties, the big culprit here thus far for both teams in this first half. First time Sizemore has been stopped. Here comes Oliver Springs, and it's going oh, to be intercepted. intercepted. He got a lot of running room in front of him. Sims again has it down to the 25-yard line, and credit pressure by the defense that time. Sizemore got, got pressured. Let's see who it is coming off the side there. There it is right there. Can't really see the number. But a big play. Let's see if we can catch him down through here. Well, somebody's coming right up the gut, though, right there. And you just can't see who it is. First to give him any credit with those black jerseys, you cannot tell. Let's see if we can find somebody with a towel hanging out. That might be it right there. Well, Oliver Springs has had plenty of opportunities in this first half, Ron. Plenty. That was Nelson, I think, that caused that. I, another penalty. Maybe a sideline warning. I think Nelson might have been the player coming in. Sideline warning. I hate that rule. With, I, I hate that rule with a passion. Well, I hate it that they take so much time to just enforce it. All you have to do well, is I don't, just warn them. You know, I don't understand what the big deal with that being behind you, what that's such a big deal. I really don't. It's a hammer's first down for the Bobcats. And, David, they really need to take advantage. You're not going to get many more opportunities. I agree with you 100%. Two turnovers here now and a fumble. They need to, they need to uh, take advantage. And that's going to be illegal oh, procedure against uh, the Bobcats. <laughs> That's a good question, Brad. Brad's asked me, Ron, is this week one or week zero or week ten? And I know this is a young football team with Oliver Springs, and I know there's a lot on the line tonight. We need to, everybody needs to just take a deep breath. Because what they're doing is just not working for well, them. Well, this is really just <laughs> focusing. Yeah, I guess. you got to focus on these deals yeah, here. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you, you've listened to that, that snap count a zillion times since July. This time, Childress this time takes the snap, and Childress gets to the 25-yard line. So Coach Brackett mixing it up a little bit, just running out of the out of the Bobcat formation. And 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 David, that might have had something to do with that motion penalty there. We might have had somebody else calling the cadence. Second down and 10 now as they get back the five off the penalty. Buck now back at quarterback in, in the shotgun. And this time they'll fake it to Childress and Stevenson will not make it back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard. 
tell you, David, I would come right back to the play that we talked about earlier of of hitting of hitting uh, Nelson out in the flat on that little on that little flare pattern right. that, that they had open out of the back earlier. Field. Yes, yeah, that they the had open field. earlier because the, the the linebackers, if you've mentioned, they're leaving the spot. Yeah, they're coming. So third down and eleven. Three down linemen, and Buck looking, Buck looking, and it's a pass down into the, at the five yard line, just knocked down. Well, good thing for the Auburn Springs young man, Ron, is number three really cannot catch the ball. He's yeah. dropped more than he's caught tonight. Yeah, that, uh, that, that really didn't have much of a chance no. at all. And he's trying to put the ball in between t uh, two defenders. I mean, that's really a tough pass. I mean, that's a tough path for a senior to make. You know, and, and, and to try to help him out, you know, I may have people clearing out deep and just have somebody come in underneath and try to try to make a catch. And, you know, with the coaches up on top, I'm sure Auburn Springs will adjust to that at halftime, but right now they're, they're struggling a little bit with that passing game. Maybe something simple, like you said, a screen pass. Big fourth down play for the Bobcats. Buck, again, looking across the middle. Incomplete. Wow. Much better throw that time. Good throw. Much Good throw. better throw. That's pretty good defense. Man was right there. So the Yellow Jackets will take over on downs at the 25-yard line of the Bobcats. It'll be another Hammers first down with 7.42 left here in the first half of play. So Sizemore now goes back to work. It's complete, and it'll be down to about the 32-yard line. So Woods on the stop. Well, old quarterback from Williamsburg, Ron, he throws a good ball. And they run, you know, they're just running those good patterns. They're down and out, curls, second down and five for the Yellow Jackets. And the Bobcats bringing a little more pressure now. They've got, they've got folks stunning here and trying to get some pressure. And this time they're going up the middle. And again, good play by the Bobcats. Big play. Bird with Bird a big play, play that time. And you know, usually when you're here in Auburn Springs, Ron, you hear his name called a lot. A bunch. A bunch. A bunch. Third down and seven now for the Yellow Jackets. He so brings his lunchbox when he comes to play. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> Bobcats need a big third down play here defensively. That's true. Slot both up and down, and this time Sizemore, and there's a penalty flag thrown, and Sizemore will be stopped. Boy, and that's back at the 23-yard line. I'm not sure you don't have to take this if it's holding, because I'm not sure they don't go for it on fourth down uh, here. You think they would? I, I don't know, but I'm not sure, because that flag is back at the 23-yard line. It might be. So that takes it all the way back. He's took crazy. Down. He just took him down. That was a good tackle. Let's see. They're going to decline it. Yeah, I just wasn't real sure you get it back to the 13. You give them another throw, but but good call. Good call. 6:12 left here. Clock running now. I don't know that I don't go after this thing, Ron. I'm going after it. But we don't. Not a, not a lot of pressure. Nice high kick that's oh, going to go oh, out of Lord bounds. Well, no, it looked oh, like it Lord. was going out of bounds, but a nice kick. And it'll be down to the 14-yard 14 line? Yard line. Yeah, it looked like it came off the side of his foot. It looked like it was going out of bounds. That was a nice punt. So it'll be a hammer's first down for the Bobcats. 
And the ball will be placed at the Oliver Springs 14-yard line. Man, what a punt, Ron. We've had two excellent punts tonight. I mean, one from each side, really. Well, they've and, been big. And that thing hit and rolled forever. And this one's going to be bigger than the other one from Oliver Springs, but that was a huge punt right there. Turn the field, didn't You it? talk about flipping the field. I don't know if I went took that penalty now. <laughs> 5.53 left in the half. Oliver Springs trying to get something together here. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Gets to the outside. Nelson that time with a nice run, showing good speed once he gets to the corner. And David, that just goes to show you right here, look how they're pinching in. Everything's pinched in, and when you get to the corner, there's nobody. <laughs> there's there's nobody there. Oh, yeah, there's nobody there for us. Acer, you turned us Acer off. was Acer's there. there. What I was going to say, <laughs> the running back needs to quit doing that little hesitation. Just go on and run because you're not going to fake him out. It's right there at the sideline. Yeah. The Williamsburg kid's got his best player there with him. We'll be right back. I'm Bruce Fox. To train a retriever like Ty to run a hunt test or a field trial takes experience, dedication, and teamwork. If you've been seriously injured, we have a dedicated team of attorneys and paralegals to prepare your case, not just accept the first check offered by an insurance company. We are Fox and Farley. We have the experience, reputation, and a proven track record of results to get you the justice you deserve. Give us a call. Drop at a boy. First down, it's first and 10 on the Hammers first down. And a big play there, David, uh, gives you a little uh, breathing room. Yeah, just a little bit, because it was an excellent punt a while ago. So the Bobcats now <clears throat> try to get something going before half. Stevenson this time will get it out to the 35. That'll be a gain of five. and. You know, that's what they were doing on the first possession. You're, you're down in distance, your own schedule. Well, you just got to, you know, it's catching them wrong in the right defense too, but uh, you're right, your own schedule though. This time Childress is going to be hit back at the 30 yard line. But David, as you've mentioned earlier, <laughs> You just you can't run it 100% of the time. They're just putting eight men in the in the box. Well, it's like they're saying, we dare you. We dare you to throw it, Oliver Springs. And, you know, Oliver Springs has threw it, but they've not completed one yet. And they need to come. All it would take is one completion. So third and ten for the Bobcats. And, you know, David, if they could hit the right pass and hit him in stride, you might be able to go the distance because there's not going to be anybody home. Correct. So Oliver Springs taking as much time and then call the timeout with 4.28 left, third down and 10. The Harriman Utility Board is committed to providing safe and reliable natural gas service to our customers in Harriman and Roan County through the use of safe operational procedures with trained and knowledgeable personnel. An odorant is added to natural gas and maintained to a certain level so that in the event of a gas leak it can be easily detected. If you smell or suspect a natural gas leak, please call the Harriman Utility Board at 882-3242. We can be reached 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Third down and 10 for the Bobcats. Coach Brackett getting the play into his football team. Big play right here, Ron. It is a big play and Bobcats now getting in position. The official will put the play in motion and here we go.
and Buck is going to be hit behind. Boy, I tell you what, where'd that guy come from? Is that number 15? No, that's now, yeah. Junior. No, it was number seven, I think. Number seven. Well, he's a linebacker, Ron. Boy, he, I mean, he, he, he had an open gap, didn't he? And basically, they're playing a 4-4 run, and they're bringing their linebackers every time, and they're pinching in the out, the defense, the the outside people are on the corners, and and they're just it, our Springs just can't block them up front for some reason. They're having trouble. And Oliver Springs will take another timeout. If you're the sound of my voice and in the trucking business, you owe it to yourself to call James Brumman Insurance. James and his highly trained professional staff have many years of transportation experience. Let us put our many years of experience to work for you. Remember, whatever you have, we write it all, including all coverages for truckers. Give us a call in Oliver Springs at 435-5400. James Brumman Insurance also has an exclusive logging program for this area that includes general liability, equipment, and workers' comp. 865-435-5400. 5400. Fourth down and about uh, 15. Sims in punt formation. Boy, he needs a big punt here. Snap is good. The kick is away, and it is a nice high kick that's going to hit at about the 45 and take a Oliver Springs roll and it'll be blown dead at about the 33 yard line. So a nice punt by Sims. And AC's up 14 to nothing over Clinton, Ron. 14 to nothing. Yep. So Hammer's first down for the Yellow Jackets. And we have 3.30 left in the first half of play. And the Yellow Jackets will go to work. See if Oliver Springs continues to apply pressure defensively. And they're going to go around the right side. And a big play by Oliver Springs. He'll lose about two. Sims that time. Sims played a really good game defensively here tonight and punt the ball well as, as, as well. So loss of one, it'll be uh, second down and 11. And Oliver Springs putting really uh, up the pressure here on Sizemore and the Yellow Jackets. Sizemore looking out and it's gonna be hit immediately. Woods. On the stop for Oliver Springs, and what a nice tackle that was out in the flat. Ball in the air a long time, and that shows you the arm strength because arm he strength. got the ball there in a hurry. Yep. Third down and four for Williamsburg. 2.20 left, first half. Sizemore looks like his favorite target is 23 out here at the bottom of your screen. He's thrown to him several times tonight. On the little give and go this time, and the ball's in the air a long time, and it's incomplete. Good play by Oliver Springs as they had two defenders back. Sims was back, and Childress was back. So good play that time by Oliver Springs. You see double coverage. And, and that, nice play. And that ball stayed in there a long time, too, a Long Rob. time. Well, they ought to back on up a little bit because this young man can punt the ball. <laughs> We've seen that the last time. He probably punted at 60 yards. Yeah, I'd take me 10 more back. Yeah, I would, too. It's easier to come up than it is to go back anyway. So the now we have a sideline infraction warning on the other sideline. So now each one has had a warning. 
And Sizemore now will be standing at his own 16 yard or 26 yard line to punt. 159 left in the first half. No score. Would they fake it here? Uh, they might now. I wouldn't be shocked. They don't have nothing to lose anyway. Punts away, and this is a going to be a, well, the, I was going to say it was going to take a bounce. It does take a bounce down to the, about to the 17-yard line. So sounded like a thump out there. I wasn't sure if somebody got a hand on it or not. Oh, it might have hit somebody, Ron, coming well, out. I mean, I say it, it sounded like a thump. It might have hit somebody. It might have went off his own player. Well, all I know is I just heard a thump. I believe it did. It went off his shoulder pads or his helmet. Off his back. So it's a hammers first down for Oliver Springs. 147 left in the half. And they'll have it at their own 17 yard line. Well, you don't want to turn over here. No. Play most step too hard this first half. Stevenson will have it out and he'll gain about a yard. I'm going to guess right here, David, you're probably uh, happy to just go to the locker room. Williamsburg will get the ball to start the second half, but you don't want to turn over right here. Well, we don't have Dooley coaching this game, so we probably don't need to worry about that. All our springs will probably take as much time as they can to the back judge starts winding it down at five to snap the ball. They don't have no timeouts left, as Brad just told me, so well, they need to they need to move it on. And don't want any timeouts right now. Probably not. Just just get the clock running. And again, up the middle to about the 19-yard line with 57 seconds, and Williamsburg may take a timeout. Be third down at about seven, and I, if I was Williamsburg, I'd take a timeout. I, I believe I would, too. I don't know how many they got left. They've got two left. I'd take both 40, of them right now. 43 seconds left. I might go west. Have to punt the ball to me. So, again, Oliver Springs will wait for the back judge, I'm sure. Well, they pitch it, and there's a flag down. So, this is going to be against Oliver Springs as the referee throws the flag. So that'll stop the clock with 19 seconds. So, man, you don't want that to happen. You don't want the clock to stop at all in this situation. Illegal procedure, Oliver Springs. What did he see? I don't know. I didn't see it, so. <clears throat> could, the, uh, could the back have been in motion coming forward instead of back? He could have been. We don't get the, didn't see anything. Timeout, Williamsburg. Just like Williamsburg will call the timeout. Yeah. I, I'm surprised they didn't call it one before well, I, that. I, I probably agree, I agree with you. They probably should have. They had two to burn. They should have caught one. Big Ears Creek Mart in Rockwood and Midtown and the Go Mart in Harriman offer Roan Countyans the cheapest gas in town and some of the coldest beverages around. The Go Mart is located at 116 South Roan Street in Harriman. Big East Quick Martin Rockwood is located at 326 North Gateway Avenue. And Big East Quick Martin Midtown is located at 2843 Roan State Highway. Fourth down and about five, so Sims will need to get a boomer off here. And you really hope for no return. And it's a high snap. But he gets the kick away. This is going to be an end over end kick that's going to take a nice roll. And they'll take it at the 39 yard line and.
be downed at the 39 yard line. So there's 9.6 ticks left for Williamsburg, so I'm sure Oliver Springs will just bring some safeties back. AC's up 22 to nothing over Clinton. Yeah. So Sizemore will bring his team to the line of scrimmage for perhaps the last play here in this first half. And watch out for on the top of her on that big receiver. That's probably who he's going to try to throw it to. Sizemore rolling out, looking, and he's looking for 23. Oh, tell you what, boy, they were lucky that time because they went for the ball and it went over their head. Yeah. And in and in and out of the hands of 23. And there were three defenders there on him too, wasn't there? Yes. See right here, watch now. They go for oh, the ball, man. see? It, it went over all of them's head. I mean, he's, yeah, that's that that's was six. a – That was uh, – That was – you know, if you're going to go for the ball on that situation, you, you better, better go for you it. Better, you better catch it or knock it down. 2.5 seconds left in the half. So Sizemore will try to come again. Now he went to this side on that last play. Let's see if he goes up top side. And there he's looking. He's looking at that one, and it's going to be down the sideline and intercepted, and Oliver Springs now will have the last play. Wait, well, so on, Oliver Springs. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, what a block right there on Sizemore. Oh, and he's another free. block. There's a flag. There's a flag. That block's coming back. Wow. And he's going to take it in, and Sizemore is still down. No, there's penalties all over the place. Sizemore is still down. There's penalties everywhere. Sizemore got blindsided. I mean, he was – he was – that's as – I haven't seen that since the opening game at, at Anderson County. See, okay. No, there's penalties everywhere. I don't think you have to worry about it. It's coming back. <clears throat> That's why you don't throw it necessarily on the last play of the half, though, isn't it? That's true. Block in the back. So we'll end the half on a boo from the Oliver Springs fans on a great play. If you look right here, see if we can find that block. There's, there's right here's the Sizemore. Right there's the block in the back. the block, up. okay. But uh, Sizemore will go to the half. One untimed down. He'll go to the half with a, and if a every, headache. And if everybody's seen it, uh, if seen the replay like we did, they'd see it's a block in the back. How can that, that how can the half not be over? That, they weren't on defense, they were on offense. Yeah, this half is over. Huh? I guess that happened yeah, after yeah, but, the, but I guess the turnover puts you back on defense, makes it a defensive thing, I think. It happened after the interception. Yeah, but it makes you it become you become a defensive team then. Yeah, but what I'm saying is is they're giving the ball back. Giving the ball back to who? I don't You're know. Giving I'm, the ball to I'm confused. Aren't they? Well, I, I don't know how that can I don't know how that can be on defense though. Well, it's it's uh well, that's right. It's an off. Well, it is, it's an offensive thing. That's right. <coughs> so the block in the back occurred as an offensive team. It did. It occurred as an offensive team. Yeah. Huh. It's coming up. I don't really understand that. Right there. It's blocking the back. Yeah, it's a good call. No, it went on 16. But anyway, now Oliver Springs will have one play here to. Everybody's stopping by wanting to see the replay because it's a touchdown for Oliver Springs. And it was a good play. Are they? Did they give the ball back to? No, the ball's to Oliver Springs. I, I just don't understand. Well, Ron, what they're. <coughs> I guess what they're saying, Oliver Springs on defense and you can't end the can't end a quarter on a defensive penalty. But they weren't on defense when the uh, when the well, penalty the, occurred. Yeah, well, they, I agree with you, but okay. they were on defense. I think okay. that's what they're saying. Okay. Well, that, yeah, Must that must be a that, different rule for high school than it is on That I can mean. be all that it can be, isn't it? That's all it can be. Huh. Well, I wouldn't. 
Well, I'll tell you what, this that hit on Sizemore was vicious. Watch out for the second half, Ron Barry. This game's going to get chippy. Stay tuned for the high school marching band. It's time for your natural gas scoreboard snack attack, brought to you by Oak Ridge Utility District. Hi, I'm Leslie England. And I'm Nikki Bradley. We're with Oak Ridge Utility District, and this is your scoreboard, scoreboard snack, snack attack. attack. And so we're from Oak Ridge Utility District. Tell us a little bit about what goes on at Oak Ridge Utility District, why it's so important to, we're showing natural gas products, to cook on natural gas in this commercial. What's going on? Yeah, if you haven't been down to our showroom, you guys need to come check it out. Um, we have a full showroom of natural gas, kitchen appliances. Um, we also have washers, dryers, logs, everything you need basically to turn your home into a natural gas home. And then this year, what we added actually like where you could get your refrigerator, your full kitchen. Yeah. So you, everything we do can full match. Kitchen, your dishwashers, even things that aren't necessarily natural gas. It rocks. So today what we're doing is we're doing a snack attack garlic bread. It's a, called a three cheese garlic bread. Okay, so we're starting off with um, two tablespoons of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of butter, which is also equal to a quarter stick, and one compressed garlic clove, but if you don't have that, one eighth of a teaspoon of powdered garlic works just the same. Then we're gonna go ahead and get one and one third cup of crumbled feta cheese, and then one and a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, and this is grated. And we've got our chopped onions here, which are uh, one, what are the chopped onions? A half a cup. Mm -hmm. So I think that's all of our ingredients. And then we have ciabatta bread over here, which we purchased. Just purchase a loaf at your local supermarket. All right, from there, what we're going to do is we're going to have to slice the bread up first mm -hmm. before we do anything else. So y'all know how to slice bread. So we'll come back to this when after we get through slicing some bread. Okay, so now, Nikki, what we're going to do is we're going to mix the three ingredients, the first three ingredients off the recipe, which is the butter, mm -hmm. the mayonnaise, and the garlic. And by the way, just so you know, you can find the recipes at www.ord.org. So go to our scoreboard snack attack for recipes. We're going to do that in one bowl. Just mix it up really good. And in the second bowl, we're going to mix all of our cheeses. And by the way, we're going to be adding some jack cheese to this. Make right. it cheesy. Make it cheesy our cheeses. So what we're going to do after we mix these two in, we're going to go ahead and spread okay. the first mixture, sprinkle the second mixture, and smush, which gives you a S cubed. <laughs> good one. I don't know if it's right, but it might. Sounds good. And, and then we're going to put it in um, at 475. And again, you always want to preheat your oven, mm -hmm. your natural gas oven, and we're going to bake it for 12 minutes. Okay. See what comes out. And then when you take them out of the oven, you can serve them with uh, pizza sauce or whatever you want to serve them with again. Mm -hmm. And they look delicious. Um, ready to eat one? My favorite part? Definitely. How about we split one? This is pretty big. Ooh, look how steaming hot that is. Give me the big side. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, didn't, I don't want to say anything about that, but <laughs> here we go. That's delicious. Huh. It's hot, but it's good. Great. That would be great with spaghetti, wouldn't it? That's very good. Or lasagna. Mm -hmm. And that's your scoreboard snack attack. Make sure you visit us at www.ord.org. Mm.
dawn of time, civilization has known war. The omnipresent quest for ultimate power has fueled numerous attempts to achieve dominance through violence and fear. Can this overwhelming desire for supremacy at any cost ever be overcome? This is the question of the ages. Resistance grows ever stronger. 
the oppressed strengthen their resolve to fight with courage and determination for their just and noble cause. They band together as one body, empowered by their sole purpose to overcome their fate. seemingly vanquished, the oppressed begin to bask in the success of their victory. This quest, as seen in their eyes, is one of peace and contentment for all. At Sexton Automotive of Oak Ridge, we have a terrific selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. We are a part of the Sexton Automotive Group family of dealerships, and we sell and service all makes and models. Sexton Automotive of Oak Ridge is also a full-service Napa Auto Care Center, and our state-of-the-art Napa Collision Center can handle any auto body or glass repair needed. Come see our new look at the family-owned and operated Sexton Automotive of Oak Ridge, 799 Oak Ridge Turnpike. Get your Nexton at Sexton.
Eddie's Body Shop in Harriman is not only the best body shop in Roan County, but they are the most convenient as well. You get one-stop shopping at Eddie's Body Shop. We can tow your car, we can fix your car, and we can rent you a car while you wait on your repairs. And you'll love the repairs because we'll make it just like new, guaranteed. We have a state-of-the-art one-touch analysis machine that ensures that your frame is just like it was before your accident. Plus, Eddie's Body Shop has a muffler shop and mechanical repair shop for even more convenience. So you've tried the rest, now trust the best. Eddie's Body Shop in Harriman. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Is my prescription ready yet? No. Why don't you try shopping a while? Nope, not yet. How about now? Not quite yet. Now? Oh, looky here. Now your prescription's ready. There's got to be a better way. Leader Pharmacies. No hassle, same co-pays, better service. This is better. Your local leader drugstores are just around the corner. In Rockwood, Live and Let Live Drugstore is at 225 West Rockwood Street in downtown Rockwood. Or call 354-0234. In Harriman, go to Chase Drums at 319 Rome Street next to the Rome Medical Center. Or call 882-2421. In Kingston, visit Kinzer Drugs at 142 East Cumberland Street, just across from the courthouse. Or call 376-5157. Be sure to visit your local leader drugstores today. Is my prescription ready yet? No. Why don't you try shopping a while? Nope, not yet. How about now? Not quite yet. Now? Oh, looky here. Now your prescription's ready. There's got to be a better way. Leader Pharmacies. No hassle, same co-pays, better service. This is better. Your local leader drugstores are just around the corner. In Rockwood, Live and Let Live Drugstore is at 225 West Rockwood Street in downtown Rockwood. Or call 354-0234. In Harriman, go to Chase Drums at 319 Rome Street next to the Rome Medical Center. Or call 882-2421. In Kingston, visit Kinzer Drugs at 142 East Cumberland Street, just across from the courthouse. Or call 376-5157. Be sure to visit your local leader drugstores today. just off of Highway 27 between Herman and Rockwood. 
I'm Senator Ken Yeager, and I want to join the rest of the community to wish all of our athletic teams the best of success this year. Athletic sports is a good way to build esteem and physical fitness. And thanks, too, to the others who help, the students, the parents, the bands, and the cheerleaders, and all of the folks who make football time in Tennessee a, a great Tennessee tradition. Thank you for all that you do, and thank you for letting me be your senator. At Sexton Automotive of Oak Ridge, we have a terrific selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. We are a part of the Sexton Automotive Group family of dealerships, and we sell and service all makes and models. Sexton Automotive of Oak Ridge is also a full-service Napa Auto Care Center, and our state-of-the-art Napa Collision Center can handle any auto body or glass repair needed. Come see our new look at the family-owned and operated Sexton Automotive of Oak Ridge, 799 Oak Ridge Turnpike. Get your Nexton at Sexton. Hi, sports fans. I'm Kent Calfey, the candidate for state representative of the 32nd District. I'd like to ask you all to come out on Friday night and support the football teams, the bands, the dance corps, the flag corps, the cheerleaders, and everyone else involved in Friday night sports. These are our leaders of the future. And speaking of support, I'd like to ask for your vote on November the 6th. I'm Kent Calfey for state representative, and I approve this message. Bruce Fox. To train a retriever like Ty to run a hunt test or a field trial takes experience, dedication, and teamwork. If you've been seriously injured, we have a dedicated team of attorneys and paralegals to prepare your case, not just accept the first check offered by an insurance company. We are Fox and Farley. We have the experience, reputation, and a proven track record of results to get you the justice you deserve. Give us a call. Drop. At a boy. The Harriman Utility Board is committed to providing safe and reliable natural gas service to our customers in Harriman and Roan County through the use of safe operational procedures with trained and knowledgeable personnel. An odorant is added to natural gas and maintained to a certain level so that in the event of a gas leak it can be easily detected. If you smell or suspect a natural gas leak, please call the Harriman Utility Board at 882-3242. We can be reached 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Just to talk, we're back in Alvar Springs, Ron Berry. Yeah, good ball game tonight, zero zero. It, as I told a caller a while ago, he called me and I, he said, "What kind of game you got?" I said, "We've got a flag throwing contest because we've had a bunch in the first half." Well, we have, and, and and several turnovers here tonight, both teams, and and David, this uh, somebody's going to take advantage of a turnover here in a minute. Well, that's what I told Marty. Marty's the one that called me, and I told him. Oliver Springs has had the advantage in the first half on the turnovers, Ron. They've had three interceptions, I think a fumble recovery, but they've shot themselves in the foot. I mean, inside the 20 and, you know, a penalty here and a penalty there or a bad pass and, uh, you know, it really not a well, really, be honest with you, it's not a well-played first half. A lot of turnovers in the first half and a lot of penalties in the first half. Well, Williamsburg will get the kickoff here to start this second half, and, and I look for them to really just come out and, and, and it, 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 it it appears, David, to some degree, they've been trying to get too much, too quick. Yeah. And and I and I look for them to maybe just come out and and look and try to, uh, you know, to do a little control uh, passing game, and and see uh, see if they can get something going. On the Oliver Spring side, it wouldn't surprise me to see Childress come in out of that out of that um, option there and and start trying to find something some some little breaks or something. And, and, and see if he can pop something. I still go back to that little halfback flare pass or screen pass the way the way that uh, Williamsburg well, is coming yeah, in. I agree with you in the tight end pass, but I tell you what, our Springs uh, uh, kickoff team right here, they better have their head on a swivel because I got a feeling this thing's going to get chippy because there was a couple violent hits right before halftime on that last uh, that last interception. Uh, there's going to be some people looking for payback, I think. Well, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, there was some <laughs> – I mean, it, it took forever to, for that last play to, to get over. Yeah, and there was two really, I mean, you know, there was a block in the back, but there were some good hits on that play, but uh, better have their head on the swivel. Low will be deep as Sims kicks off for Oliver Springs. And right here's your hole. He kicks two right here on the 20, 
There's not a soul right there. Let's see if he puts it right there. Nope, kicks it the other way. Well, he tried to, though, and he just got it a little low, but uh, the, the wide receiver, he's got some outside, and Oliver Springs does a good job because if he gets by that wave right there, David, he had another 20, 25 yards of running room. Yeah, or maybe a touchdown. Roberts on the stop for Oliver Springs. And it'll be a Hammers first down after the Tennessee Eye Care kickoff. 882-7470 for all your eye care needs. They take care of my eyes. They'll take care of yours. They have a, a wonderful uh, frame shop. They have everything you need. It's a one-stop shop. Tennessee Eye Care. Hammers first down for the Yellow Jackets now. And let's see. Oliver Springs was able to keep up some pressure. This time, Sizemore gets outside. And Sizemore's a little droggy there a little bit at halftime, but he comes right back and, and takes it around the right side. And, and Oliver Springs is going to have to contain him. He gets outside there and a big play. Yeah, he got laid out right before halftime, I mean, on that interception. I mean, he got laid out. Nice tackle by Tinker out there, so... Second down and seven. Stay in the same formation. And they hit it out on the little wing and another nice tackle by Tinker out there. And that play looked like it had some running room, David, when it first developed because they hit the <clears throat> same thing we were saying Oliver Springs do. They just hit the, the, the little back out of the backfield right there. And if that, if that receiver makes that one block right there. You see running the running. runner cut in front of his blocker and he yeah. couldn't block you. Or you've been blocking him in the back. Third down and about six for Williamsburg on this first second half drive. Big, no score. Big down right here for Oliver Springs, Ron. Big defensive down. And here comes the pressure. And he's going to take it, and he's going to just keep it and run it. He's and short. he's going to be short. Yeah, but you know, Ron, the way he, they've been running the ball tonight, this is no-brainer right here. Well, they went for it on fourth and fourth and, and, and one while ago, so I'm sure this is, <laughs> like you said, no, they're going to kick it. Coach said kick it. This is fake. Official timeout right here. What we got? One of these stupid rules where you got to take the play thing it has to be on your arm. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, we're going to stop it. We, I, I cannot believe this. I cannot believe it. Rule is a rule. I understand the rules are the rule, but us, that, I mean, that rule does not hurt anybody. That's the stupidest rule, too. Fourth down right here, and Bobcats need to be, uh, need to be a little leery here. Oh, on the ground. Oh, he fumbled it. There's another break, Alvin Springs. And yeah, Ron, he's having, he's, you're right, he is yeah. a little slow getting yeah. up. I don't think he, he's all, he, he, he can't hardly get up. He's hurting. He may not come back. And the Bobcats were coming after it anyway. He just yeah. dropped the ball. He just dropped the ball. And let me go back on that rule. I'm not blaming the referees on the rule. I just think it's TWSAA. They're ruling us to death here. It's, and it's nitpicky stuff. It's not the officials. They got to call it. I understand that. Sizemore on the sidelines over there looking. He's looking for some help. And the uh, now there'll be some uh, some folks go by and check him out because uh, he just dropped that ball. Yeah. I don't know that I don't set him. I, this game doesn't mean anything for Williamsburg. It doesn't change their playoff opponent. It's the same one win, lose, draw, tie, or whatever. Hammers first down. And he drops the ball. And Bucks down to the 40. Nelson's down to the 41-yard line. Is the ball wet? No, it shouldn't be at all. That's just what I wondered if it's raining when you come in. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like. I'm telling you, Ron Barry, this is week zero, buddy. It's not week 10. Week Think zero. They're tricking us. They're tricking us. Nelson now comes back to take the direct snap. Nelson this time goes up the middle, founds a little run. Here we room, go, here we go. And Nelson will have it down to about the 25-yard line. 
And that really, I don't think, was a design play, but Nelson uh, made something out of made nothing. Something. And you know, Rock. And a flag know, down. I swear. Unsportsmanlike on who? Who spikes the ball? 44 does? So let's see at the end of the play here. Yep. Oh, they call it. That's a spike right there now. Well, they called it because there comes the flag. Wow. They're both all shaking their head. Oh, man. Well, if they're going to call that, then we're going to be here for a long time. Now, if this is a spike. I tell you what. Well, the only guy I know on this card is Johnny Stair. He's the only guy I know. Well, that's I've never heard of the rest of them. They're all rookies, I guess. I don't know. Wow. All I can say is wow on that one. That's uh, That was weak right there. Third down and about 16. Weak, weak, weak. Wow. Step up, Ron Barry. Nelson again. Tries to find it and gets it down to about the 34-yard line. And I really hate to say anything about, about the officiating, but, you know, you've got to let these kids play. I mean, that wasn't a spike. I mean, he just he just threw the ball down. That wasn't no spike there. You need to take that at you, die guy. And if that's unsportsmanlike conduct, they should have been about 20 more flags thrown tonight for unsportsmanlike on, on, some, on some different <laughs> kinds of hits. Well, we're talking about the wrong people, Ron. We should be talking about the kids. You're right. Fourth down now, and the, and the Bobcats going. This is going to be a big play right here. Halfback pass. Oh, look at him. He's wide open in the back. And oh, it, it just a, stayed in the air. Just He was just about two counts too late throwing it, David. They had the play. Good play, though. They had the play. Great play call. <laughs> and if he throws that about two counts early, the defensive back just had a little, little too much time to come over because he came, he came halfway across the field. He did. You can see him coming right there. It just hung up just a little bit too long. Great play call, though. I come back to that one as well. And that's a, that was right there was an indication of the Bobcats had something going, and that penalty killed them again. Hammers first down. Sizemore back to throw. Gets through the first tackler, but not the second. All the way back to the 30, and right now the Bobcat defense, David, is is a uh, it's it's psyched. Ears pinned back, they're going after him, Ron. And you notice know, Sizemore, he's lost a step, Ron. He's not as quick as he was in the first half. Well, I think I, I think he's trying to avoid some hits now. He probably is. Instead of the uh, first half, he was trying to take some on the quarterback draw. Listen, if that been me, got hit down here like him, they'd be taking me to Oak Creek Hospital right now. I'd been laid out. I'd be on the bus anyway. Second down, 14. Now Sizemore is going to go around the other side, and Sizemore is going to be hit. Another good tackle, a flag. And are they going to call horse collar? Well, that's up around the neck. But he got him by the jersey. Had him by the jersey. No horse collar there. guys on the radio down there, they're crazy. <laughs> it's a well-officiated game. Well-officiated. <laughs> Another missed call. No horse collar on that one. <laughs> wow. Oh, excuse us, folks. We got a little wow. comedy up wow. in the press box. <laughs> you God, no mighty. Got a man wide open and another good hit. <clears throat> and they'll get it out to the 50. Gain of two. And David, 
if there wasn't a little chipper going on, it's fixing to start. It needs to. I'd go ahead and get a little chipper. And, and right here, and see, like right there, he's missed. He's giving him a half a yard on the mark from where he, from where his forward progress yeah. was. And Ron Loudon is up 14 to nothing. They said Lenore City, I mean, not Lenore City, but Keats has been in the red zone four times. No scores. Wow. That'll kill you, too. Second down and eight. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And Sizemore gets a lick in there. He was going to make sure he wasn't the receiver there. Yeah, and that boy Fire Springs still down. Yeah, he was the giver there. Yeah, he got up. Uh, that's a big boy right there. Look out from the Williamsburg guy, dragging down, holding him. There's a block in the back right there. So it's a hammers first down for the Yellow Jackets. Official whistle is there. Let's see now. Is that going to be timeout? Williamsburg. Located just off of Highway 27 between Herman and Rockwood. Hammers first down. The ball is at the Oliver Springs 37 yard line. And the Yellow Jackets on the move after a big run by the quarterback Sizemore. Sizemore again back to throw, looking a little screen pass, got runners out in front. And Oliver Springs hustles back and another flag down. And another marker down. Two markers. Getting a little out of hand here now. Getting a little out of hand. So the Bobcats, after the penalty. Yeah, he got it, Ron. They'll have it down at about the 19-yard line. He got it. So it'll be another Hammers first down <laughs> as again the uh, the Bobcats helping the Yellow Jackets out here on this drive. So Sizemore again up the middle and leaps the first defender. And And Coach Brackett about had enough. So Coach Brackett gets a flag. That might be the intentional foul in basketball. Might be. Good job with his assistance, though, not letting him get tossed so far. Here we go. First and goal. Ball is at about the seven yard line. When you gotta watch Sizemore right up the middle again. First time tonight he's under center, David. Yeah, it is. 
Back to throw, throws it in the end zone. Touchdown, Williamsburg. Nice touch that time, and all he did, David, was he just threw it out and uh, let the receiver run under it. Threw it to his outside shoulder. And Woods looks like he's got a cramp in the end zone. You see there, he just throws it up, and uh, looks like Woods was cramping. How can, the, how can the long snapper be late on an extra point try? I don't know. He was, though. So now they're going to call timeout to give him a time to get, uh, yeah, to get reset. <laughs> now he's going to, he has to throw the flag now. <laughs> well. No, I'm not going to say it now. Just be quiet. <laughs> so the attempt. High snap, and it's blocked. So Oliver Springs blocks the kick on the point after. We'll be right back. For 30 years, Jerry Duncan Ford and Harriman has maintained a reputation that stands on its own. They have thousands of customers from Tennessee and from all over the U.S. Shop with us online at jerryduncanford.com. At Duncan Automotive, nearly 85% of their customers are either repeat customers or referrals, which means that they're doing two things right. One, they're selling great cars, and two, they're treating customers like family. Shop online at duncanautoonline.net. Well, it's brought the uh, it's brought the Oliver Springs fans to their feet anyway. That's right. So here we go. It's a Tennessee I Care kickoff. 882-7470. They'll take care of all your I Care needs. Give them a call. They're in the Pinnacle Point Shopping Center. This ball is going to hit and go out of bounds. And so Oliver Springs will have it at the 35 yard line. So pretty pretty good field position. No, it goes where it goes out of bounds. Yes, where it goes out of bounds. No, it's at the 35. So it's got to come to the 35. That's what I was thinking. They're just marking it there. But you know, you never know. You never know. So they're going to set it up. Are they going to make them kick it again? So they're going to kick it again. So Oliver Springs will have them kick it again. So they're going to kick the ball this time from the 35 yard line. So the Yellow Jacket fans come alive here. This press box is rocking, Ron Barry. <laughs> after the last. <laughs> after the last series. They kicked it short that time. Now will they try to kick it <clears throat> deep? I think you come back to the same thing again. So the kick, this time they kick it short and the Bobcats will pick up another 10 yards. It'll be first and 10 for the Bobcats. At the 47 yard line. Don't good understand. Field, don't understand field. that. I don't understand. That don't make no sense neither. So here come the Bobcats now <laughs> on a hammers first down. Really good field position, Ron. Tennessee I Care kickoff goes to the Oliver Springs 47 yard line. First and 10. Now, do the officials try to start making up some? I, <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Coming out, it'll be.
Buck will be the quarterback in the in the shotgun for Oliver Springs. And the line linebacker for Williamsburg hits Childress after a gain of about three. Bobcats now to the line of scrimmage, looking for a play. Oliver Springs needs something big to happen. Tries to bounce it outside, nut there. And Williamsburg does a good job that time of containment. And there'll be a loss of about a yard. So third down and about nine. So third and about nine for Oliver Springs. Big third down play. Might come back to your play here, Barry. Oh, he's wide open, he's wide open. Oh, he just threw it too late. Yeah, the timing is uh, they're just holding the ball just a little too late. The plays are there. It's a nice play call. And they had the man open. It just uh Well the plays when he cuts at the when he the plays when he cuts at the thirty five, right, right. it's not about the thirty two or thirty three or not the 30, in the middle of the and field. And not in the middle of the field. It's on the side, on the hash mark side. That's where the play's at. Right so, play call. So Sims now will come in again <clears throat> to punt for Oliver Springs on the fourth and nine. And you know, Ron, that's something that the young man will learn over time. Yep. He's just a freshman. So Ooh, nice high wobbly punt. kick. And can Oliver Springs get down to stop it? And they do. They stop it at the six yard line. Good. So they flip the field position. Big time. 3.53 left here in the third quarter. And Williamsburg Yellow Jackets <laughs> will take over on the Hammers first and 10. So big stop here now that, uh, you know, Oliver Springs needs to get the ball back in good field position here. They need a, they need a stop on this series. And they need a good defensive stand right here. Boy, and it's awful scary out here seeing this man-on-man -man coverage out here, David. Backing off a little bit off of him now, Ron. Sizemore tries to go around the right side. Sizemore will pick up maybe a yard. Stevenson on the stop and they do a good job here. And these are just these are just planned calls. These are set calls, David. Yeah, and I noticed that time Williamsburg's having trouble on that on that uh, pulling guy to get he, he's not getting the block like he was in the first part of the ball game. And David, the, the big number 15 we've been talking about hadn't been a factor yet. Somewhere in this game he's got to be a factor. He's too you, big a target. You would think he would be, Ron. Back under center. And they throw again uh -oh, the same he's thing. Wide open. Oh, good catch. And it's the same play that they scored on, David. They just throw it up to his outside shoulder and just let him run under it. You know, Ron, when you're on an island like that, you cannot let that – I mean, you cannot let that guy outrun you right there. You've got to run with him. If nothing else, get a penalty. Pass interference is you, it would be your best friend. Get a penalty. Can't let him beat you like that. And that's, uh, that's what we were looking at when we said that, you know, he's standing out here on that – on that island, and uh, and 23 has been a favorite target all night of Sizemore's. I don't know that I'll back off of him a little bit and not play up, even though he is snapping the ball, though. And they got him, got him yes, all the way back at the 25-yard line. So a big loss that time. What did he lose, about 10, Ron? Uh, 10, 20, uh, yeah, about 20. Wow. 233 here left in the third quarter of play. So big play that time by Dakota Miles. They need to tell number 27, Father Springs Rod, if that receiver runs to the concession stand, he goes with him. And especially back <laughs> up a little bit yeah, now. Yeah, back up a little bit. Give him a little bit of cushion, young man. And they're gonna try the quarterback sneak and he's oh no. And he gets loose. And he gets down. a first down on a quarterback sneak. On a 
quarterback sneak. He saw something right there and a good block right here by the guard on the linebacker and then just some missed tackles. I believe Auburn Springs linebackers come, Ron, and he just and he caught them at the right time. He caught them in a blitz. That's a big play right there. Yeah, it was. Big play. Well, I picked up, uh, what, 20 yards probably? Yeah. Five. Yeah. So it's another Hammers first down for the Yellow Jackets. And this time they give up the middle, and Nothing. Bobcats are there. And really, other than Sizemore, the running back for Williamsburg, he's not that No factor. Back. No factor. Hamilton on the stop. So a uh, loss of about a half a yard, second down, and, and we'll call it 10. We've got 117 left here in this third quarter of play. And again, uh, his favorite man, his target, out here to the bottom of your screen. He'll roll this way and just hit this guy. This time they're going to try the option. And coming up for the Bobcats, good play. Morgan, Morgan, Morgan makes the first play right here, and Woods comes up and finishes him off. Yeah. So a big play that time as they went to an option for the first time tonight. Third down, 11. And right here, you got to look for you got to look for the big man three or 23. David is who you got to look for. That's who they've been going to. Right here might be a surprise, Ron. 15. You've been calling for him all night long. Well, and he's got man-on-man -man coverage from a linebacker. Here come the Bobcats. They throw it out quick, and it's incomplete. Well, they say it's the fumble. I mean, a backward pass. Wow. wow. Man, everything's going their way right now. So they're going to say it's a backward pass. And he just picks it up quick. That was, I tell you what, awfully sharp move on the, uh, on the running back's part there. Bobcats have an injured player. Just a quick pace for game for the officials tonight, too. Sure is. Clinton's getting beat 35 tonight by Anderson County. So while the uh, looking after the injured player, let's take a break. Is there really a beautiful long way? You know there is. And the only way to get there is on a simplicity. The way to a beautiful lawn runs through your neighborhood simplicity dealer. Quick Mart in Rockwood and Midtown and the Go Mart in Harriman offer Roan County Inns the cheapest gas in town and some of the coldest beverages around. The Go Mart is located at 116 South Roan Street in Harriman. Big East Quick Mart in Rockwood is located at 326 North Gateway Avenue. And Big East Quick Mart in Midtown is located at 2843 Roan State Highway. Eddie's Body Shop in Harriman is not only the best body shop in Roan County, but they are the most convenient as well. You get one-stop shopping at Eddie's Body Shop. We can tow your car, we can fix your car, and we can rent you a car while you wait on your repairs. And you'll love the repairs because we'll make it just like new, guaranteed. We have a state-of-the-art one-touch analysis machine that ensures that your frame is just like it was before your accident. Plus, Eddie's Body Shop has a muffler shop and mechanical repair shop for even more convenience. So you've tried the rest, now trust the best. Eddie's Body Shop in Harriman. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. 
The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Is my prescription ready yet? No. Why don't you try shopping a while? Nope, not yet. How about now? Not quite yet. Now? Oh, looky here. Now your prescription's ready. There's got to be a better way. Leader Pharmacies. No hassle, same co-pays, better service. This is better. Your local leader drugstores are just around the corner. In Rockwood, Live and Let Live Drugstore is at 225 West Rockwood Street in downtown Rockwood. Or call 354-0234. In Harriman, go to Chase Drugs at 319 Roan Street next to the Roan Medical Center. Or call 882-2421. In Kingston, visit Kinzer Drugs at 142 East Cumberland Street, just across from the courthouse. Or call 376-5157. Be sure to visit your local leader drugstores today. For 30 years, Jerry Duncan Ford in Harriman has maintained a reputation that stands on its own. They have thousands of satisfied customers from Tennessee and from all over the U.S. Shop with us online at jerryduncanford.com. At Duncan Automotive, nearly 85% of their customers are either repeat customers or referrals, which means that they're doing two things right. One, they're selling great cars, and two, they're treating customers like family. Shop online at duncanautoonline.net. Hi, sports fans. I'm Kent Calfin, the candidate for state representative of the 32nd District. I'd like to ask y'all to come out on Friday night and support the football teams, the bands, the dance corps, the flag corps, the cheerleaders, and everyone else involved in Friday night sports. These are our leaders of the future. And speaking of support, I'd like to ask for your vote on November the 6th. I'm Kent Calfin for state representative, and I approve this message. Bruce Clark. To train a retriever like Ty to run a hunt test or a field trial takes experience, dedication, and teamwork. If you've been seriously injured, we have a dedicated team of attorneys and paralegals to prepare your case, not just accept the first check offered by an insurance company. We are Fox and Farley. We have the experience, reputation, and a proven track record of results to get you the justice you deserve. Give us a call. Drop. at a boy. The Harriman Utility Board is committed to providing safe and reliable natural gas service to our customers in Harriman and Roan County through the use of safe operational procedures with trained and knowledgeable personnel. An odorant is added to natural gas and maintained to a certain level so that in the event of a gas leak it can be easily detected. If you smell or suspect a natural gas leak, please call the Harriman Utility Board at 882-3242. We can be reached 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you're in the sound of my voice and in the trucking business, you owe it to yourself to call James Brummett Insurance. James and his highly trained professional staff have many years of transportation experience. Let us put our many years of experience to work for you. Remember, whatever you have, we write it all, including all coverages for truckers. Give us a call in Oliver Springs at 435-5400. James Brummett Insurance also has an exclusive logging program for this area that includes general liability, equipment, and workers' comp. 865-435-5400. Is there really a beautiful long way? You know there is. And the only way to get there is on a simplicity. The way to a beautiful lawn runs through your neighborhood simplicity dealer. So, Sean Childress, the injured bobcat, as he comes walking under his own power back to the Bobcat bench. But uh, I tell you, David, this, 
th th this young man's played a heck of a ball game here. The, the Bobcat football team won't be the same without him on the lineup tonight here in the, on the field. No, it won't be, Ron. And he looks awfully woozy. And if it's any sign of a concussion, he'll be done because uh, the physician will have to put him back in the game, right? Yeah, that or a certified, uh, some type of certified some trainer or something like that. Childress that time on the little fake. Sizemore gets it uh, out to about the 40 yard line, gain of about five, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. So we'll take a break, be back for the fourth quarter of this football game. down the seam and the flag is down. So have a flag the, on the play? What's the well, yeah. He's going to give it to us. Dead ball. First the foul. So it must have said something. Must have been something verbal that time because the side judge threw it at the end of the play. So nothing there, nothing there. So it must be a little conversation going on as the and side knows, judge it, threw it, a flag. He throws it from the side. Throws it from the side. <laughs> and... And you got an official standing about three yards from it that's probably going to hear it more than him. Loudon beats Kingston. So first and 10 under center, looking the same throw again this time. And another flag God down. Almighty. So another flag, that'll be pass interference. Hadn't had one of those tonight, so add that to the book. So that'll go to the five yard line and it'll be a first and goal on the hammers. First and goal play for for the Yellow Jackets. Well, a score here from Williamsburg, Ron, is really, it, it, it's, it's huge. I so, mean, Sizemore under center, let's see if he just, he'll pitch it. They try to go outside and it's gonna be thrown for a loss back <coughs> to the 10. Good play that time by the Bobcats. You know, Ron, I'll be honest with you, uh, Albert Springs can't give up a field goal even here. Miles on a big play that time for <coughs> the Bobcats. I mean, there's 11 minutes and eight seconds here and have to score two times. And, you know, we've played three quarters and had not scored yet, so it'd be tough on them to have to do that. Second down and goal from the 10. So do we have another little fade route? Yep. There it is. And a nice oh, play. play, broken up. And that's, uh, that's his favorite receiver out there. Yeah, and he's caught a lot of touch. I think he's caught 15 touchdown passes, Ron. Looks like West on the... As Brad said, he's correcting me now. West on the uh, coverage out there, nice play. So third down and goal. 
Big down, big down. They're all, the next two are big. Season's on this right here, Ron. Sizemore looking, throwing again into the end zone, and it's caught. Touchdown. And they go right back to the young man, and a really nice throw. 17th, I think, of the year now. Under pressure, look here, right on the money. Right on the money. Good pass. And that might have been Oliver Springs' season right there. So the Yellow Jackets on the nice pass and catch, and they'll go for two. Sizemore under center. This time looks and throws into the end zone, and it's caught. And that time, just a matter of, of the bigger man coming up with the ball. You're right, Ron Berry. So with 10.39 uh, left in the ball game, 14 to nothing, Yellow Jackets over Bobcats. For 30 years, Jerry Duncan Ford and Harriman has maintained a reputation that stands on its own. They have thousands of satisfied customers from Tennessee and from all over the U.S. Shop with us online at jerryduncanford.com. At Duncan Automotive, nearly 85% of their customers are either repeat customers or referrals, which means that they're doing two things right. One, they're selling great cars, and two, they're treating customers like family. Shop online at duncanautoonline.net. So it's a Tennessee Eye Care kickoff. Go by and see the fine folks at Tennessee Eye Care. Doctors Browning, Whitkey, Hunt, Minda, and Fleming. 882-7470. They'll take care of all your eye care needs. Nelson has some running room. Nelson tries to get outside, and he'll bring it to the 41-yard line. Bodies everywhere. There's a penalty. No, I thought he was, he was reaching. Oh, he was reaching for it. <laughs> yeah. He was reaching. Got another Oliver Springs kid down. Yeah, I got some cramps, got it looks cramps. like. <coughs> and you know, you wouldn't think you'd be cramping this time of year, Ron. Cool, cool night tonight. Well, these DBs have, have really run a lot of yards tonight, David. Well, and, and they've been some deep, deep routes. And some of these kids from Oliver Springs runs playing both ways. Well, the majority, yeah. So it'll be Hammer's first down for the Bobcats, and they really have got to go to work now. 10-29 left in the ball game. Man, AC is absolutely killing. Playing 45 to nothing. Timeout. Williamsburg, we'll be right back. Hi, sports fans. I'm Kent Calfee, the candidate for state representative of the 32nd District. I'd like to ask y'all to come out on Friday night and support the football teams, the bands, the dance corps, the flag corps, the cheerleaders, and everyone else involved in Friday night sports. These are our leaders of the future. And speaking of support, I'd like to ask for your vote on November the 6th. I'm Kent Calfee for State Representative, and I approve this message. And the Hammers first down for the Bobcats. Throw it out on a quick pitch to Nelson, and Nelson, oh, he, he stumbles. At about the 43, had some running room in front, but got tripped. He didn't stumble on. I think he gets a first down. Yeah, he had a, he had some yards in front of him. 10-13 left in the ball game now. And this is probably Oliver Springs' biggest offensive possession of the night because they, they I, I think they have to score on. I don't think they can afford to give it back to them. I think you're exactly right. And Nelson this time stops, cuts back. 
and fights for his own, and a flag down and another flag coming in late. And it could be face mask. Face mask. So that'll give the Bobcats a first down. And the Bobcat fans reciprocate with a little uh, little cheer there that it's not on them. <laughs> Most of them have been tonight. And looking to throw now. Got a man there and, enter, and another flag. <coughs> So now all of a sudden the flag is going the other way, David. Yep. And that's a, that's might be a case, David, of what you were suggesting on the other side. The man that far behind you just grabbed. Yeah, I mean it's what you do. <laughs> you give 15 <laughs> yards instead well, of perhaps a touchdown. There you, there you go. I mean that's your best friend. If you get beat, just grab on, hold on. Childress is now, well, I was looking. I thought that was him, but that's not him. I was thinking he was up walking around. No, he's still down here sitting on the bench being talked to. Okay. So another hammers first down for the Bobcats. <clears throat> Nelson in motion, and he'll get the football. Trying to get outside, and he has to fight his way, and he'll not get back. He'll lose about two. And that play slow developing. Nelson's wore out, Ron. Yeah, and that's what you have to worry about these last nine minutes now. These yeah. kids going both ways. He's wore out. I tell you what, he is wore out. Because while all this is going on, Sizemore's over on the bench resting. Yeah, he's resting. Back to throw. Looking across the middle. It's tipped. Oh. Incomplete. Boy, when they're tipped like that, you really – Take a big chance of interceptions going on, but and that's going to bring out third down and 12. Well, I've only got a few more minutes here before I leave to go do the Friday night scoreboard. I just want to say I've enjoyed it this year, and we'll do it again sometime. But we've enjoyed it, and appreciate and appreciate all your uh, input, and and uh, especially uh, we've had it. We've had a good year. Keeping the folks informed on the Friday night school. Well, you have a big night tonight. Oh, we got a big one. There's your play, Ron. Same thing, though, David. Same thing. Uh, the, 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 the minute they choose to run it, Williamsburg comes with a with a blitz. It's just like they know what's coming. They're just it's like one a half a step or a step ahead of them. So, fourth and 12, this is a uh, – this is, uh, the start of, of the season right here, David. Yeah. Well, you've said it, well, we both have said it, Ron. Some of them will hang their uniforms up tonight for the last time till next year. They take a couple weeks off, go to basketball, and some of them are going winter workouts. So big fourth down play. This is it right here. This is all riding on it right here. Rolls out, throws it. And it's incomplete. So there's nine minutes left in the ball game. Fourth and 12 that time on the shoulders of a freshman. And sometimes, folks, it's, it's just too heavy. It's too heavy. So on the Turnover on downs, the ball will go to the Yellow Jackets. And the Yellow Jackets now just, they probably don't have a slow up offense, but this time they'll run it up the middle with the running back and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll gain one.
So we had some clock run that time, so they're going to have to adjust the clock. So the official wants time to come over and talk to the clock operator. some time to the clock so the clock is now right second down and nine for Williamsburg here now with 835 left in the ball game so they wind the clock And Sizemore again down the middle to the seam. It's the pass is complete. And they'll have it down to the Oliver Springs 48 yard line. So it's incomplete. They just ran the seam route and it looked like uh, from here I thought he had a catch. There's the football loose. So third down and nine now. Sizemore and the Yellow Jackets. And Sizemore is going to go around the side and he'll be pulled down and right at the first down marker. And looks like another horse collar penalty is going to be called. Sizemore this time just goes around the left side and cuts the seam up. Oh, it's face mask. So horse collar, face mask. So his head jerking back around there on that one. So that'll be marked off. And that'll take it down to about the 40. So Williamsburg now lining up at the Bobcat 40 yard line. Sizemore looking to throw again down the seam and it's incomplete. So we talked earlier about the big receiver there, number 15, um, being a factor and they've tried that same play three times now. Incomplete on that one. So that'll stop the clock, second and 10 and eight minutes left. So every incomplete pass now helps the Bobcats because it'll stop the clock. So second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. The big receiver comes out wide to the right. He had the two point conversion catch here a little earlier. Big tall kid, Sizemore looking. They're gonna try to go to him. Now Sizemore being pursued. And Sizemore now will Throw it to a wide open receiver at the 20 and he's going to be hit at the 20. And again, Oliver Springs player down as they had a collision right there. Sizemore that time had a great presence on the field. And he comes back, sees his receiver and just throws a pass to him that's complete. And right there you see the collision. And the Oliver Springs player up. And another hammer first down for the Yellow Jacket. Sizemore now under center, so I would guess he's either going to throw the fade and he's going to throw the slant, and a flag is down. So probably going to be illegal motion, illegal, yes, illegal formation. So the penalty will be marked off as the slant pass was complete that time. Seven twenty-six left here in the football game. So 
So the ball will be at the 25-yard line. They'll start the clock, first and 15. So Sizemore gets back in the shotgun. And looks, man over the middle is there, but he's going to go to the corner. It's complete at about the two-yard line. And Corey Shelton has really, really put on a, an exhibition here tonight on how to catch the football. He goes down into the corner and makes the catch. So we're going to have a timeout as the Oliver Springs player will come out. And that's Woods, the injured player. So we'll see who the Yellow Jackets put into the ball game. And they'll put in Jonathan Huckabee. <clears throat> so Huckabee goes in. Boy, and what a situation to go in. You got you've got a young man out here in Shelton that's caught everything that's been thrown his way tonight. And so this time Sizemore will go in and he'll throw the other way to the big guy. He goes up and gets it, and a flag will be thrown. And did the big man come over his back? If the big man came over his back, let's see what it is. So there it is. He was hugging him, hugging him like a doll. So pass, pass interference against the big man. So that'll wipe off the touchdown. Sizemore that time, though, he just throws it like he did on the two-point conversion. He just throws it up in the air to the big man. 6.59 left in the ball game. So Andrew Griffin, number three, the big wide receiver, bottom of your screen, and another timeout by Oliver Springs. I'm Bruce Fox. To train a retriever like Ty to run a hunt test or a field trial takes experience, dedication, and teamwork. If you've been seriously injured, we have a dedicated team of attorneys and paralegals to prepare your case, not just accept the first check offered by an insurance company. We are Fox and Farley. We have the experience, reputation, and a proven track record of results to get you the justice you deserve. Give us a call. Drop at a boy. I invite you to stay tuned immediately following the ball game for the Friday night school board show. Have all your scores and, and playoff scenarios for you as the uh, Channel 12 school board researchers are actively piling through the research as we speak. Shelton goes out wide to the left. Griffin here to the right. So Dobbins Bennett coming back to tie the score at 34. Sizemore looks, throws it into the pylon. Touchdown. Shelton out here. And the ball is loose. The ball is loose. The ball is loose. The, the ball was loose, so they get away with one there.
Kick is good. So there it is. He has it. Ball is loose before he gets it. There's the ball right there. The ball was loose before he crossed the pylon, but the score is good, 21 to nothing. We'll be right back. The Harriman Utility Board is committed to providing safe and reliable natural gas service to our customers in Harriman and Roan County through the use of safe operational procedures with trained and knowledgeable personnel. An odorant is added to natural gas and maintained to a certain level so that in the event of a gas leak it can be easily detected. If you smell or suspect a natural gas leak, please call the Harriman Utility Board at 882-3242. We can be reached 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Tennessee Eye Care kickoff, 882-7470 for all your eye care needs. So the kick, and it's kicked and is taken at the 26-yard line. And Morgan will bring it out to the 26, and Morgan is down. And he'll get up. Six forty-seven left as the Bobcats now go to work on the offensive side. So the Bobcats come to the line of scrimmage, trailing twenty-one to nothing. Six forty-seven left in the game. This time Nelson, Nelson tries to get outside and Nelson will have it out to the 41 yard line. So Hamlin will make the stop. So second down and five. Oliver Springs now. Buck looking back to throw. And he'll try to run it. And Buck will be down at about the 34-yard line. Rose and Husky. Third down and 12. Five twenty left here in this football game. Buck back to throw, looking across the middle, had a man wide open, overthrows him. And Shelton, the receiver, turns interceptor for the Yellow Jackets. And Shelton just as proficient on defense as he is offense. So Brandon Owens, another freshman in at safety for for the Bobcats. Sizemore back in the shotgun. And they'll give it to the running back. 
and he fights his way across the 40 down to about the 39 yard line. 4.56 left in the football game. So they're trying to run as much clock as they can. 4.34 left here in the ball game. Ball is loose and Sizemore tries to get outside and does down the sideline and Sizemore down to the he'll mark it, let's see, at about the 25. So 4-14. Left here in the ball game on another Hammers first down for the Yellow Jackets. So Husky is hit and tackled down. And he'll lose a couple. And Morgan now looks like he's cramping a little bit. So second down and 13. So 326 left here in the football game. Griffin to the bottom of the screen here. Sizemore this time again on the running back up the middle and he'll get down inside the 25 to about the 21. And so Stevenson on the stop, 258 left in the game, third down and about seven. And again, we just want to uh, say once again, how much we've enjoyed again another season of high school football here on channel 12 and without our sponsors it would not be possible without the help of the administration of the schools it would not be possible and this time a flag is down husky is going to be thrown for a loss and certainly without uh, our producer and General Manager Brad Jones, it would not be possible. And our cameramen, it would not be possible. So on the penalty, it'll be third down and 12. And again, Marty Maston, David Queener will be joining us immediately following the game for the Friday night school board show. And certainly uh, we appreciate them each and every Friday night being there to take your calls and uh, hear your comments. Sizemore again on the run and it's Husky is thrown for a loss back to the 32. Miles on the stop. Cameramen tonight are David McCarty and Trevor Bogart. So again, guys, thanks for uh, the good camera work. To Brad Jones, say thanks for all, all of the stuff that, that he does and the effort that he puts in because it's all about the kids. And we certainly appreciate the hospitality. Every stop we make, it's, uh, it's just great. It's, uh, it's really good knowing that, uh, that the administrations of the schools uh, accept us, want us to be there. And to you, the viewers, 
Thank you very much. Huh? McMinn, McMinn County over Bradley Central, 34-29. That was a big win for them. That'll seal up their playoff fate and probably put them in a uh, – that'll be their district – they'll be their district champs. So fourth down and 15. 138 left in the ball game. So let's see, uh, Williamsburg may just elect to run the football here. Sizemore, the quarterback. And they do, and Oliver Springs on the blitz and they read it perfect. It was like they were in the huddle during timeout. So Tinker, Tinker on the stop, and he blitzed that time and was just perfect timing for Tinker. And Tinker comes out with a cramp. So it's uh, 131 left in the football game as the Bobcats will go to work offensively. So the Bobcats, probably with their final possession of the year, and it's going to be Nelson. Nelson will be thrown for a loss on the little sweep. As Husky that time came back from the backside to make the stop. So second down and 12. And this snap will take us under one minute. So Williamsburg will go to nine and one on the year. And this is gonna be intercepted. And with the interception with 51 ticks left. So the freshman, Brandon Buck, having a tough night here tonight. The young man's come a long way since he was called into duty. And we'll come back next year. Williamsburg in the victory formation. And they've stopped the clock. So there must be a flag down. Imagine that. Don't know why they stopped the clock. Now they're going to roll it. Don't understand it. So one more snap. And Sizemore takes the, well, he never did take the knee, but it's like that's going to be it. So that'll be the last play of this football game. And Williamsburg comes down the interstate to get a win here tonight at Oliver Springs. Score 21 to nothing. Williamsburg over the Bobcats. And we'll tell you. Friday night school board show standing by and guys again we want to thank you for being with us this school year we want to thank you for uh, supporting the young men and the cheerleaders and the bands thank our sponsors and we hope that you'll go by and tell them how much you've enjoyed it as well for Brad Jones David Queener David McCartney and Trevor Bogart and Brittany Wagner White, Brittany White at the studio.
So for all of us, it takes everybody, guys, to make it successful. We want to thank you. We hope you have a great night. Stay tuned for the Friday Night School Board Show, Studio B at Channel 12. RMG. Bring your junk, cars, aluminum cans. We'll buy it on the spot and we'll pay you a lot. We treat you like family at RMG. Yeah, we treat you like family at RMG. Rome Metals, we treat you like family. Rome Metals is located just off of Highway 27 between Herman and Rockwood. I'm Senator Ken Yeager and I want to join the rest of the community to wish all of our athletic teams the best of success this year. Athletic sports is a good way to build esteem and physical fitness. And thanks too 